I see a lot of podcasts that I see a lot of podcasts that um, you not that you want to get feedback, but you start looking at what they're doing and you start just hearing stories from other people and they're like, Oh, you have listeners. Like they're, 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 they're they're like surprised that you actually have viewership. And so I guess I have to be more content with the fact that I have good viewership and listener listeners for so early. I mean, 79 episodes, 80 episodes in this is your, this is uh, episode 80. Nice. So it's like, Okay, that's amazing. I've done this for 80 episodes, but it's like you're just technically starting. Just getting started. So yeah, you know, so you, we, unfortunately you see the Joe Rogan, you see all these other podcasters, they're episode 2000 or they're episode 1000. It's like, all right, so, but when did you see them in their journey? Did you see them at episode one? Did you see them at episode 100? Were you able to see them at episode 600? And chances are most of them know unless they already had some type of a following. Uh, so it's just, it, it's a, it's a delaying gratification. It's a taking the, the marshmallow test. It's a giving yourself the time to grow and, and, and enjoy the journey because then once you're at the top, how many people don't enjoy the, the top once they get there? It's re, it's really the, the satisfaction of the grind and all the shit that you go through to get to that point. That is like the exciting part. The work is the reward. It's another yeah. one. Yeah. And it's tough and it's tough to sit there and, and, and accept at times because you want it now. I want the Lamborghini now. And who, anybody who tells you they don't is fucking lying to you. They're lying. I want the Lamborghini now. I want the, I don't even want fame. I just want notoriety that people understand that I have more to offer the world in terms of like advice. I'm a young guy. I'm 32 years old. There's a ton more life experience I need to have in life to be able to give advice to everybody. But for the 32 year olds and even let's say up to 40 year olds that haven't done some of the things that I've done or experienced some of the things that I've experienced, I think I have uh, a a good amount of wide, diverse information and knowledge uh, of things that I've accumulated over the years that can help people out. And that's really, and, and the guests that I have come on, that's really the other part of it. I don't want it to be just about me. I want it to be about the amazing people I get to sit down with. You're, you're going to do it, dude. So are we Thank rolling you. right now? Actually, we, we've been rolling. That's right. it. I, you know what? You said you like the, you said you like it when we just cut it on. So I said, I'm just cutting it on for my man, Matt. Look, look. So Nick, one of the things I've been thinking as I've been listening to the show is that you're doing the right things, right? Right. You're not going to stop. You're going to be persistent, right? You, you, you know, you've been saying this all along, right? So how many podcasts are out there that have five, 10 episodes and then they go, they go bye-bye, right? Yep. That's most of them, right? So you're, you're way past that. You're, you know, you're in it. When I listen to your show, I don't know where you're going to end up. I don't know if you're going to be like, it, it's not that you're going to be like Tim Ferriss or Andrew Huberman. You're going to be like Nikki Rizzles, yeah. but you're going to be the same guy that you are now three years from now, but you're going to have a much bigger audience. I know that because you're doing the right things, right? And you do, look, I'm 44, okay? But I listen to your show and what is Rizology about? It's about more than one thing, but to me, the number one word that comes to mind is values, Thank right? You. So you, you did say that on a, on a recent episode, um, but it's, it's about values, dude. Like, like, yeah, you've got people on talking about health and weightlifting and jujitsu, and that's all awesome and good information and great conversations. But then you also are putting yourself out there and value, like people need values. People need some inspiration. People need some leadership. And that's what Rizology is, is, is giving me. Actually. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No, for real. And, and, and that's really what it is about. I want to bring value. I, I really do. And, um, there's a lot of uh, shock value entertainment that's out there. There's a lot of like, oh, it's just a prank, bro. Like just to get views and garner people to, you know, drum up emotions and feel a certain way when they see certain things. And that's what they're they're banking their shares on and this and that. I just want to be the same guy that I've always been, for real. I just want to be the same guy that I've always been, except with more information and things to share with people. Like Tyler and I are sharing the fasting stuff that we've been doing. We're not fucking experts on fasting, but at least we can share from the grindstone of us doing it ourselves what our experiences have been. And then, hey, here's some anecdotal evidence that it does X, Y, and Z for you, and it helps you here, and it it produces autophagy. I mean, how many people really have groundbreaking shit that they're talking about that has never been done before. I mean, generally, it's it's really non-existent. Uh, unless you're some type of, an, uh, you know, an, an astrophysicist that's splitting atoms and no one has seen this research ever before. A lot of the stuff is information that's just been out there that these people are presenting to their audiences that their audience can then distribute the information 
however they please, whether they share it with their friends, they share it with their families, they share it on their social sites. And then maybe by by just the the ability of seeing my face or seeing whoever's face was talking about it on the show, that's how it grows and grows and grows. And you become more relatable and more um, more of a, a not a household name, but more of just a recognizable face for life experience, information, production stuff like if, you know, other creatives that tune into my creative episodes where we talk about what we deal with clients and this and that just I'm, I'm, I'm early in my entrepreneur game. I started in 2018. I mean, I, I working for myself full time, COVID happens, shuts the world down. It, it felt like ground up ground zero again. And we have to figure it out. We're constantly going through these evolutionary periods, which I know you can give me tons of insight on because you've probably had peaks and valleys of your own life throughout the 44, 44, 44, yeah. Throughout the 44 years that you've been on this planet. I mean, it's just, it's a journey. It, it Journey is, like, is, a key, is the key word there. I mean, I talk about the journey all the time, constant ups and downs. I write about this. I talk about this over and over again. So um, look, you know, there's nothing that it's, it's I don't want to sound, throw out too many cliches, but there really is nothing that hasn't been said before mm -hmm. in terms of information perspective, right? Um, but- if that were the if that if that's what mattered, then you or I wouldn't be doing what we do. We wouldn't have podcasts. We wouldn't have newsletters. We wouldn't whatever we do. The the thing is, it's like your it's how you give it. It's it's how you it's your story. How you infuse your story, right? So your podcast, it's like I I give people nutritional advice, but I don't really give them advice. Mostly, I listen to them and then I help connect the dots for them, right? So it's how it's how you do what you do. Um, as far as the journey and ups and downs, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, entrepreneurship, it's lonely sometimes. Yep. It's very lonely sometimes, but that's also part of the journey that you have to embrace, kind of have to embrace the suck. I'm sure that's, that's a phrase that's been thrown out there, but it's true. Yep. You know, those are the parts that you learn from the bet that you learn from and grow. Right. So it's like when you start something and look, I, I started a daily blog in 2013. Okay. Um, I have almost zero readers on that blog, but I've been posting on that blog every day since 2013. Okay. That's over like four or 5,000 posts, but I'm going to keep doing that. And I don't do that. I do that mostly for, for me. It's changed my life in many ways, but the readership hasn't grown on that particular blog, but I don't care about that. So I don't know, just in terms of being an entrepreneur, you gotta, you gotta, if you believe in something, you got to keep, you, you just got to keep going. Yeah. You know? Developmentally, I'm sure yeah. that's helped you though, throughout right. not only life, but being a coach as well. Yeah. Because you're able to articulate what you want to speak about. You're able to formulate your opinions and your words into correctly written, you know, gra grammatically correct and, and, and formatted wording on an actual blog. So although, you know, you may not have any uh, readers and you may not have anything like that, it's, it's almost like a running journal for you. That's exactly right. I don't like it. I don't write it journal style because I know that people don't want to read what I, it's not like, oh, today I woke up and ate broccoli. Like people don't want to read that. <laughs> and, and there are a few readers, right? But I'm just saying like, I, it's what you said is right on. Like, Starting that blog in 2013 started me on the path to becoming an, a good writer, an excellent writer. So now if I have to write uh, something for any other publication, that just comes right out nice and easy because I've written thousands and thousands of posts. Yeah. In addition to that, it's like you said, like that, that part of the journey opened me up to so many other things, to learning from so many mentors and other things. So it's, it's, actually, it's absolutely changed my life. And how do you stay consistent and uh, motivated to continue doing that, and especially in the earlier days where you see post 100 may not have as many viewers as you as you were hoping for? Mm -hmm. So consistency, right? So I, so consistency is my second favorite word, right? So you talked about the journey already, and then you talked about consistency. There's only two more. I have four. Right? You hit my top two. Um, look, there are a lot of things that I have I have streaks on, and and I'm consistent with. Like I've been doing that every day. I meditate daily, work out, you know, religiously, and some and a few other things, right? Um, how do you stay consistent? It's it's how do I stay consistent? I'll I'll answer it this way. In the beginning, it's hard, okay, and and this is there's there's a there's a there's a parallel here for for weight loss too, right? So this is why this is why I think this is important for people because people need help here. In the beginning, it's really hard. Change is really hard. So yes, like I'm a nutrition coach that helps people lose weight. And we know that there's a lot of people out there who just say like, just eat less. It's that simple. 
it is that simple, but it's not easy. It's not easy to get started with something. The beginning is really hard, right? So talking about the blog as an example or anything that you want to do every day as an example, the beginning is really hard. It takes some effort, right? But it gets easier and easier over time. And then eventually after you do something long enough, right, then it becomes a part of your personality. So right now, like, okay, let me give you another example. There was a time in my life when I was 60 pounds heavier than I am now, very fat, out of shape, couldn't get off the couch, couldn't do it, wouldn't do a damn thing, right? You couldn't convince me, go to the gym, not even close. You could barely convince me to get out of bed, damn. okay? Now, the diff this is fast forward 20 years. If I don't go to the gym three or four times a week, I, I get pretty cranky because it's a non-negotiable part of my life. It becomes a part of your identity eventually. So long story short, it's, it's difficult in the beginning, so that's why I, my, my approach usually is to make things easier in the beginning for people, but eventually it becomes a part of who you are and that's how you stay consistent. So you gotta, you gotta match the, you gotta find a way to mat, to, to make it something that you're ready, willing, and able to do right now and not make it too difficult in the beginning. It's already hard enough to get started with something, yeah. right? Something new. So don't make it harder than it has to be in the beginning. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. Okay. For, yeah. It, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah I, I've already said this with uh, a lot of friends that have joined me on the weight loss journey and the the keeping yourself accountable and consistent uh, with what you need to do and to feel better, be better, uh, resonate higher. And um, I've already explained to them, like, I don't, I'm not starting over again. I'm just not doing it. I'm, just not, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. I, I, I can't do the start over again because the starting over is the worst part always. It's like getting into the rhythm getting into the mood to go to the gym, getting this and that. And, you know, once you do start missing those gym days, once you're into that routine, you do get cranky. You do get irritated. You know, if you get an injury, you're, you're irritated because the injury is setting you back. And now you're like, oh, man, because then those first couple workouts back, you're like, oh, well, it feels like I'm starting over again. Like, I, But when you're in that rhythm and you're just going like a piston, just firing in an engine, you feel good. And generally, you know, if, if you take your rest days responsibly, which I don't, if you take your rest days responsibly and you do, you do everything that you're supposed to do, theoretically, it, it's just supposed to just keep cranking the way. And, uh, when, when, uh, what is the, what is the term? Uh, motivation is fleeting. Discipline takes over that type of scenario. It's like the discipline is going to keep you going and going. Like I woke up this morning. I did not want to go to the gym at all. Didn't want to go. Just didn't want to go. I woke up. I, I I got the the Philips Hue lights in my bedroom and in my living room. Right. And what I do is I set it for sunrise mode for 5 a.m. Okay. So every day at 4.50 a.m., it starts to slowly bring all the lights on. Right. To like mimic a sunrise to wake you up. I guess I didn't. And I have a, I have an Apple HomePod where I set my alarm and it just, you know, dun -dun 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 -dun, like dings to wake me up as my alarm clock. I guess I didn't set my alarm clock last night. I went to bed a little later than I than I should have. I went to sleep by like probably eleven, which is pretty late for me lately. I used to go to sleep at one a.m. and wake up at seven, mm -hmm. six, seven a.m. every day, and that was not awesome. But anyway, uh, so I guess I didn't set my alarm, and I woke up at I was supposed to leave my house at like five thirty, five forty to get down to where I have to go to the gym by six fifteen, and I woke up and it was like five thirty two. And I was like, fuck, the lights are already on. I'm like, oh, God. So I took my phone out. I, t I put it on do not. I put it on uh, airplane mode every night because I just don't even want it on, on. Right. My, mo my, my mom can get through to me with iMessages and this and that, FaceTime if she needs me. So um, I, uh, I pulled out my little tiny decisions app, which is like a yes or no S scroll wheel. Uh, I gotta check that out. Yeah, it's just like yeah. you know, it's just like one. Of, it's like a magic eight ball. It's yeah. bullshit, but it's just like a way for me to reaffirm if I should go or if I shouldn't. <laughs> and there's fifty fifty chance, and I just hit it. Like, should I go to the gym right now or should I just skip this workout and go back to sleep? And I looked and it goes yes, and I went, all right, let's go. And I just got out and I went, and it was an okay workout. It was good, but I'm glad I got it done because I feel better that I went and accomplished it. Right. Always, always feel better. All right. So this is a great topic. You said a lot there, also. So. First of all, I usually do. Sorry, yeah, it's okay. I know, I know, I know. I just want to. I, I don't want to miss any of the key points that you yeah, said. Yeah. You know, but the main one is that you. We all still right. So you and I have been training a long time. Um, I've been training consistently for about two decades now, and there are still days, even though my gym is in my garage, I don't have to go. I don't have to drive anywhere. It's. I just have to walk downstairs. There are still days that I don't feel like working out. So that's never going to go away, right? So. So, however, every time I get over the 
get through that and get my butt into the garage, it's always the right decision. Yeah. Right. Two sets in, you yeah. start feeling, you yeah. start blood starts moving, you go, okay, I feel, like, I feel pretty good. I, for me at this point, it's actually more of a mental work. It's like, I'm in very good shape and I do it because I want to stay in good shape physically, but it's far more mental than anything else. It's yeah. like, if I don't work out, like we said, I get cranky, I, get, I can't focus. Right. So it's more of a mental thing for me at this point. Um, the other thing you talked about was motivation. So action precedes motivation. It's not the other way around. A lot of people have that wrong. A lot of people think that motivation precedes action, and that is a myth. So there's a couple of myths that we might talk about today. That's, as in that's, you get as in you get excited. Let's say I get excited because I want to learn how to play the cello. Let's just say that, and my motivation is to play the cello. You're saying that I have to just get the action going to keep the motivation. Basically, yes. It's it, or a better analogy would be some people think that you know if I sit around on the couch, eventually like motivation to go to the gym will like strike me like lightning. It's not, that's not the way it works. Um, action, action precedes motivation. So it's like, if you're on the couch thinking about whether or not to go to the gym, but not feeling motivated, the best thing you could do, if you don't feel motivated enough to go all the way in the car yet is just sit up and put on your shoes. Mm -hmm. That's a tiny, tiny action. That'll start the motivation. That'll build up the motivation and so forth. Right. The chain reaction. Yes. So that's one of the reasons why I also usually, look for the smallest viable action that a person needs, needs to take to get started. Okay. So, yeah, so action precedes motivation. So the more actions you take, the more motivated you will become. It's not the other way around. Okay. Yeah. I could I could see that because there's a lot of times where uh, if there's like a, a, so much work to do, just in terms of just everything, there's the podcast to, to chop clips up, there's stuff to post on social media, there's uh, client edits that I have to get to, there's shoots, there's this, there's that. I find that just maybe just ingest the footage from the shoot from yesterday. Just get that into the computer. Right. And then, oh, okay, you start looking at it and you go, oh, okay, that's pretty good. Like, And you start to get the excitement to actually work on something because when you have so many hands and so many pots, you, sometimes you have to not only just pick one pot to work yeah, on. For sure. So that's one of my problems. It's like I have too much to do sometimes. The tasks are so spread out between a lot of different things that <laughs> it's almost like yeah. you, debilib you debilitate yourself into just not doing anything. If you don't, do you have to just do something. You have to just get to and I'm, one thing. Yeah. And unfortunately, I don't always practice what I'm preaching. Like, I, I'm guilty of it. So it's like I know that I have to just like for an edit, let's say if there's three edits between two different of uh, three different clients that I have to get done. Like I, I'm, I'm looking at all of these edits and I'm just like, oh, well, that's going to take three hours and that's going to take three hours and that's going to take three hours. It's like, all right, just, just start, just start. Because now instead of doing that, you did emails or you did something else. And now you look at the clock and it's four o'clock and you go, oh man, the day's basically over. And you start convincing yourself that, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow right. and I'll just do it the next day. And the next day comes and you're still not motivated to do it. So just taking the, the, the proper steps like you're, you know, telling me is the best way to just get it going and get it done. <laughs> Uh, I suffer from that too, or I'm guilty of that too. Uh, so a couple of things that might help you and the listeners. Uh, first of all, there's a great book on this called The One Thing by Gary Keller. Uh, he teaches about how just to focus on really just one thing at a time. Uh, that's a potential rabbit hole, but let's leave that there. For, <laughs> let's just leave that there for a minute. You know, the whole debate between what, multitasking or non-multitasking. It's tough, man. Right? And, so, and today, and I don't want to cut you off and, okay. and, and ruin yeah. your train of thought, it's but- okay. Uh, it, it's it's very difficult because there is so much to do yeah. and, and there's so much to remember and so much information to digest and uh, utilize. You know, you, we talk about this with with the daily habits or you talk about this with all the health things and you got Dr. Amen telling you brain health. You got Huberman telling you about neuro stuff and you have, you know, uh, let's use Dr. Hyman because I like Mark Hyman. Mm -hmm. You got Dr. Hyman telling you this, but then you have – all the carnivore people telling you this, and it's just like, holy shit, it's, it's almost like information overload that you just don't even start because you don't even know where to start. Well, if you go on the Instagram diet, you'll end up eating nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to have air, ice cubes, and coffee. That's basically, that's basically yeah. I'm just gonna, that's, why, that's actually why I fast because there's just too many options. I just don't eat anymore. That's, what, that's really what I do. Which is actually, a th there's a, something called breath breathitarianism, which people actually say that you can just breathe for energy now. That's good. So, or listeners, please don't try that. Yeah, don't try that. Don't try that no. <laughs> Fasting, we're going to do the 20, we're going to do the 48 hour fast. After Christmas Day, yeah. so whenever our, our listeners yeah. and the people that Tyler and I are getting in our group, we have like 20 people that are doing it, uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool, yeah. uh, but we're have to, we we're going to do whatever the last meal is on Christmas Day, we're going to get everybody in a group chat, and then we're all going to be like our little support circle, here we go, and just, just do it, because the Thanksgiving one was really good, but once you hit, I want to say 36 hours, 30, 38 hours, mm -hmm. 
gets a little gets gets it starts to get challenging. I've I done d- uh, I've done not a full fast, but I did what's called a FMD, a fasting mimicking diet, for five days. What is that? Uh, it's basically you eat almost you eat like you're eating like 500 calories. No, it may actually it might even be more like 250 calories. You're just eating like a little soup. And like a little water and like that's it. So it's very little food. I feel like that's like a cock tease, man. I can't. <laughs> I feel like that's just like fucking. I can't. I don't want anything going in my mouth. I'm just like, all right, coffee and water. That's all we're doing. And element packs. Yeah. Shout out. Yeah. Shout oh, 40,000 volts is in shout, all my water. Shout out to shout out to element. More salt, not less. Uh, if y'all want to sponsor the podcast, I'm all ears. I, yeah. I lo- I'm going to keep buying it regardless, but I love this shit. Listen, you know, I love Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, but Rhizology is where it's at. So let's go, element. <laughs> <laughs> So in due time, in due time, uh, my, my, my take on the flavors though, mango chili do not like that at all. I, I can't stand the mango chili. Tyler loves the mango chili. Hate the mango chili. I got grapefruit in there. The grapefruit's actually really good. Okay. Watermelon is the goat. The watermelon salt is the goat and the citrus. But I also got the flavorless one or the, um, the raw, Plain, the yeah. raw, I guess they call it, because from what I understand is the flavored ones have like 10 calories or five calories in them. Yeah. So for this fast for Christmas, I want to just go make sure there's nothing besides coffee right. and then just the raw salt packs. We were doing two a day for the for the 48 hour fast. One of them, one upon immediately upon waking up to get the electrolytes. Right. And then one later in the afternoon, evening to just make sure we have more in there. And um, it's pretty crazy. Like the, 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 the um the uprising of electrolytes like all of a sudden you hear it before all of this extra research and these i can't even call them instagram gurus because like rob wolf has been around forever just right. preaching about this type of stuff right. but uh now all of a sudden it's like trace mineral drops and it's it's the element salt packs and this and that and no 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 you want a thousand milligrams of sodium like what you start listening to the fda you're just like oh my god it's like no no you're good man just drink it i'm, I'm glad though that that electrolytes are coming to the forefront i mean i put them in all my water i just use the forty thousand volts a few drops the, from trace minerals okay um, oh i think you know what I, I i have the blue bottle yeah yep i have those too i'd use that before the element mm-hmm I just like having a little flavor. Yeah, no, I, I get you. And like, especially for athletes, I know a lot of your listeners are athletes, so super important, right? Do I recommend that like the average person who, you know, has, you know, is maybe is obese or just getting started, start with electrolytes? Maybe not. They probably should start with, you know, reducing their food a little bit. But but electrolytes, like I've heard you, you've, I know you've gone deep down the water rabbit hole yeah. in research. And listen, you know, I just... I just, I've been doing it for a few years. It's, it's totally anecdotal, but I just feel so much better yeah. since I've started taking electrolytes. Mm-hmm. Like I, uh, if I, whether I'm eating, whether I'm not eating, uh, if I have those in me, I'm just like, I feel like I'm much like almost practically supercharged, like much more hydrated. Yeah. You know, I, I think it helps with the absorption of the water and I just, I don't want to drink dead water. I don't want to drink Poland spring water that has nothing, no value in it to me. You know, yeah. well, the interesting thing that I've gone down the rabbit hole of is uh, the whole debate of remineralizing your water after it's done. Like, I didn't realize that that was a thing for a long time. I just I never knew. Like, I just thought that you filter your water because there's tons of contaminants in it and chlorine and fluoride and this yep. and that. But it, and, and then the, the adverse side of it is then there are people that are like, fluoride's good for you. And I'm right. like, really? To drink? I, I, don't, I don't know about that, brother. Like, I, I don't know if that's actually good to be going through your whole digestive tract and into your stomach. Do you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not you personally. I'm yeah, saying yeah. like to the people that say shit like that on the internet. It's like, do you? Right. Like, you just, or are you just assuming that it's good because it happens to be in the water supply? But then you start thinking about and hearing about all these extra things, the estrogenics, the the uh, birth control in the water supply, just like everything, things that weren't really prevalent 50, 60 years ago. Like they weren't, it wasn't that common to have that type of shit in there. Right. And drinking out of the garden hose in the 60s and 70s was a little bit different than drinking out of the garden hose in 2023. Right. So yeah. the I've always filtered my water. I've always tried to buy spring water versus purified water and this and that, which I didn't realize that Essentia water, Dasani, um, what are the other, what are the other shit? They're brands? all from the same company. Yeah. No, number one, they're all from the same company. Number two, they're just basically like pure, they're just right. literally filtering your well, own water. I you mean, Fiji water is not from like the mountains in Fiji. Okay. You know, so Fiji is ev- evidently, might be, yeah. Fiji evidently is yeah. supposed to be still. Yeah. That's Avion, be, you know, Avion's not ev- from the Swiss, Swiss Alps. Avion is, 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 is Water people will tell you, uh, and they will die on that cr- on that mountain, like right right where they stand. 
Evian is the best water that you can buy on a wide scale besides like more artisanal brands that are smaller batch and this and that. Yeah. It's it, it, it's crazy once you start getting into the water markets. Like I'm I'm very close to I use zero water filter right now. Right. And I think the zero water filter is good because it comes with a TDS meter and mine broke a long time ago, but it comes with a TDS meter so you can test the total dissolved solids right. of the water and see where it is. Now a zero TDS isn't always great because that means that everything has been stripped out of well, it. On some minerals, right. which I didn't realize right. yeah. for a long time. I have not realized that. I just thought, oh yeah, filter your water. It's you're healthy now. Uh, so. Truth be told, I want to get a reverse osmosis water right. uh, system. And because I rent, I can't really do the under-the-counter or the whole house one and this and that. Eventually, when I get my own property, I'll do that. But the reverse osmosis basically, to my knowledge base from the research I've done, takes the, takes the water. So if you put a gallon in, you'll get a half gallon of clean water. Right. And the, then there'll be a half gallon of wasted water that is still dirty and gross where it, it, it pushed all the contaminants into there. So you dump that out. And basically it like has a four to five stage filter. And then on some of these systems, they'll actually have a mineralization filter that puts the potassium, the magnesium and the, um, I guess, um, sodium, sodium yeah. maybe. I, I don't know if they put uh, what they do with it, but, um, some of the minerals back into the water. So this right. way when you drink it or you do what you and I have done, which is for my, Half gallon Yeti, right. I'll put 30 drops of the trace mineral drops in, or I'll put one element pack in here. And then I know that I've put the minerals that were lost due to the uh, filtration process back into the water. So this water is not going through my body and stripping my body of the minerals, because that's to my understanding what happens. Yeah. As, I, as you were talking, I was thinking about also like post workout. So, um, I don't know about you. Maybe you can tell me after jujitsu, like after I play soccer, which is like very, you know, like high intensity, if I'm playing for a couple hours, sweat a ton, by the way, people don't know this, but when you do stuff like that, you could sweat multiple pounds, five, 10 pounds, you know, in in an hour or two. But, um, I don't need a Gatorade after something like that. And, uh, and I would never was a big Gatorade drinker, but the point is when I drink water, if I just down a bottle like that size, 24 ounces with electrolytes after high intensity exercise, I feel fantastic right away. Yeah. It feels good. So I, I do. I, I, I chug when I'm done rolling yeah. and I, if, if it's been tough, yeah. I always say people are probably tired of, of hearing it, but after the competition classes on Sundays, I, you do five to six minute rounds with like six or seven people you are so fucking dead. That's intense. It's yeah. insane because we're starting standing up, yeah. so you have to worry about takedowns. You're you're gripping on each other. You're pulling on each other. You're you're resisting against another human. You're trying to shoot into their legs to take them down. And then most of the time, because I'm a fucking white belt, most of the time I'm fighting for my life, trying to get out. Uh, you know, from being on bottom position and trying to frame against them. So now I'm I'm pushing my arms into them to try to keep them away from me. I'm I'm I'm. Uh, if my legs, if they're in side control and my legs are out, I'm trying to re-engage my legs to pull back underneath them to pull them into my guard. So that's core work. And that I'm telling you, drenched. Yeah. It's it's gross. Yeah. Like it's insane. Yeah. And I never, I never was a hockey player. I never was a lacrosse player, football. So I never had that those pads. Oh, they those so na- nothing like that smell. <laughs> Yo, now though, and I was never a wrestler, obviously. Yeah. So it's like now. I finish at jujitsu and I take my rash guard off. And not only is it just like uh, heavy yeah. and gross, but that funk, that funky smell, it's nothing like my normal sweat smell. Like I have a sweat smell yeah. when I go to the gym and we all do. We all smell ourselves. And it's just like, it's not that it's bad. You just you have your scent. When I do that, it's just because of all the other people that are sweating on you and the mats and this and that. It is funkified. I tell, I, I, get, I either give it to the laundromat. I'm like, Please use all the OxyClean in this place on this, okay. which isn't good for you anyway. But hey, get the funk out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, or I, I have to bring it to my mom because I don't have a washer dryer in my place. So I'm like, mom, I can't let this sit because if this ferments, it ruins all the other clothing. It's, it's like, like kim, alive. it's like a, it's like a live culture, like kimchi, right. just in there, just spreading out the probiotics to all my other clothing. I heard you mentioned you've been eating uh, kimchi every day. You've been sticking with that more or less? Yeah. So yeah. last night, uh, yesterday was weird for me. I was in like a funky mood. I was just like kind of whatever-ish. And I uh, I got pizza. I was like, you know, I'm going to roll tonight. I said, let me go. I haven't had pizza in a while. Let me go get some pizza. I got pizza. And then after jujitsu, I just was craving ice cream. And I went into town. I got one scoop of 
s'more marshmallow ice cream from uh, Kilwins, and then I went and got rice because I'm lazy for some reason. I just don't. I have rice at home. I have a rice cooker. I just I'm like the the five minutes to clean the rice. I'm just like I don't feel like doing it. So I just go to the Chinese spot in town. I get rice, and then every time I get rice, I take two or three um, pieces of Napa cabbage out of the out of the kimchi jar, and I use the scissors and I cut it to small pieces and I mix it into the rice. Easy way to get my probiotics. Right. I mean, just you. I feel better when I eat. Kimchi, I really do. I feel better. It's my digestive tract has been kind of hit or miss the last couple of years, which I guess I'm getting. I'm not. I guess I'm getting older, and I'm figuring my body out as as it's. I used to. I have iron stomach. My stomach, I could eat. I, I used to be able to eat like two bags of Sour Patch Kids, uh, anything else. I, I could mix foods, and I wouldn't get a stomach ache. I still have that, but my digestive tract doesn't act the same. Right. So I have to now focus on less dairy. More probiotics, more solid food, binding foods, steaks, rices, some veggies. I don't really eat a lot of veggies, um, but the kimchi has been really good. My mom has always eaten it, and she's a big sauerkraut. Like she loves sauerkraut. Does uh, I haven't I have I have, Karen? I promise I'm going to listen to you, <laughs> to your episode. Karen! I haven't heard the Karen episode yet. Yeah, yeah, I will. It's a good I'm, one. I'm going back through the. Yeah, archives. Mom Deuce is great. Uh, mom Deuce is great. Um, so. Hawthorne Valley sauerkraut's my favorite brand. A little shout out to them. Okay, you, you can get pick that up at Whole Foods. So if you like, if your mom likes sauerkraut, have her check that out. It's it's the it's the best. I'm gonna ask her. Like biodynamic, all different flavors, top of the line. Okay, yeah, best. I'm gonna ask her for that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you said a lot there again. Again, yes, a lot yes, about yes. food, right? A lot so, to dissect. Uh, before we move into food, I want to quickly throw out about the workout. Also, go to sleep in your gym clothes. Think about how take the friction away, right? I do that when I every night. I go to sleep in my gym clothes, right? So now I wake up in the morning. Oh, you take the to- you you take the total effort out of it yeah. in the morning. Most people just put their gym lay their gym clothes out. That actually provides friction. It's like, oh, I have to get dressed now. Really? Right. So think about that. Just get that out of get remove as much friction as possible. Truth be told, I I you know? feel like your situation is and people that work out at home, it can be more challenging to get motivated to do it. To actually go into the garage and turn the lights on and turn versus like, let me just get in the car and get to the gym. Cause once I get to the gym, it's like, that's all there is there. Cause I've done both. It depends. During COVID, I bought a bunch of gear yeah. and it's all in my mom's garage. I mean, we're talking top of the line, rogue equipment. I know. I've been, that. I'm waiting to see your uh, garage set up in the next year. Whenever you get it set up. Yeah, we'll like, see. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. I mean, at this, at this rate with the price of fucking everything, I'm not going to have a house for a long time. I'm, It'll come. It'll yeah, come. yeah. I'm not, I'm not in a rush. I, I enjoy renting. All my friends are like so, so like dead set on, we got to buy, we got to buy, we got to buy. Yeah. Early 30s, I'm like, why? Right. I, you know, okay, I get that I'm pissing the money away on rent is that, but like, I'm not house poor now. I'm not, right. I'm not, if I want to just fucking leave, I can, I don't have right. to worry about selling the house yeah. or renting it out or fixing it up. I don't have to do any of that. I can just go where I want to go, rent, chill. And then just, if I don't like the spot anymore, I can just go somewhere else. Smart. James Altucher has written a lot about that also. Like he's a many t- multi-time millionaire financial guy. And he talks a lot about what you just said. About he's, rentals and yeah, stuff? Yeah, like, he's like, don't, he's like, he basically is like, you should never buy a home unless you meet these criteria. And most people don't. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I don't know if it's keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. I don't know if it's just, you know, having to see all the other people. Now that my age, you start seeing everybody getting into marriages and having kids and the the houses and, oh, I'm a homeowner and this and that. And if the pressures of everybody else seeing that going, oh, shit, well, I'm, I'm behind. Like, I need to. Uh, I don't know if that's what it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But for me, I just... I like to try to take calculated steps. I'm I'm more of a calculated risk kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I'm not a put it all on black, put it all on red. I like to just weigh my odds and see and make sure that it's a a, a move that you know not every move is going to pan out always, but at least I made the right choices leading up to it versus just ah eh, fuck it, let's just see if it works out. You know, Probably. yeah. Because I've been looking at like I talked to that, and I've been looking at places in other states. I got like a five-year idea in my head of if I'm going to stay here or not. I don't know. Either here or Montana for you, right? Montana, <laughs> fucking Texas. I'll go, I'll do Dallas. I, I'm starting to look at like North, North Dallas, yeah. but I have to go to these places. Yeah. I got to just experience yeah, them. Check them out for a And I have, I have plenty of time. Go to Colorado, check Colorado out, check out um, Idaho. I don't know. I've just been yearning for that type of a more relaxed, in tune, in connection with nature type of behavior. And I feel like I'm just not getting that in this area anymore. Hard to get that kind of feel here in New York. So, you know, we'll see where the, where, where yeah, the path Yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what, yeah, I say all that to basically say yeah. that it's just, you never know where life's going to take you and you got to just enjoy. So in terms of like houses and whatnot, 
one, what, wherever I wind up getting settled though, I already told my mom, like she, she said to me, she goes, are we keeping all this? I said, uh, yeah, I spent almost $10,000 on gym equipment. Yeah. You're keeping the gym equipment. Don't, don't touch it. Don't even look at it. <laughs> For, forget that it's there. It doesn't expire. It, yeah. it doesn't expire. The, the, and it's the, not even the there. Plates are still, I the same plates I bought 15 years ago. They're still good. I have, I have friends that are, a couple yeah. of friends of mine that have home gyms. They're like, yo, you still, uh. You still want the yes? I still want those plates. They're not for sale. Don't touch them. They're they're the powerlifting plates. They're the calibrated steel plates. Uh, they make that great sound when you bang them around. Totally, yeah. They're awesome. Uh, but I want to do, I want to do a uh, a home gym that has uh, an area for the weightlifting, yep. an area for the squat platform. rack, this and that, that the platform for deadlifting, beautiful. And then I want to get kettlebells ranging from yep. five. I have I have a lot of kettlebells right now, but not pairs. I want to get five all the way up to like 150. And then once you start getting to the, the heavier ones, is obviously single. I don't need two of those. But 150, maybe 200, so I can start doing some crazy shit. And sandbags. I want to get sandbags. I've made my own sandbags and my own sled also. Oh, I'll, I'll send you some pictures, but uh, yeah. you can come by and check out the gym one. I'm down. I'm down. I love that. I, I did the sandbag training. Shouts to Tom DeJu. Yeah. That's my boy. Like We were doing sandbag training, and I believe that that translates well to just life, yeah. not just you know, no, totally. Strength like, or jujitsu yeah. at life. You ever heard of uh, Zach Evanish? No. Okay. So, you know, I'll send you a link, but he's been my coach in terms of fitness for many years. So, shout out to Zach and the Underground Strength Gym. Um, and he has a program called Garage Gym Gladiators. Oh, cool. That you'll probably, you know, when the time is right for you, you may take a peek at that. And, um, but basically, you know, it's a mix. It's blended training, right? So you, you, we use the barbell, we use the kettlebells, but we also use sandbags and sleds and, and calisthenics. So it's blended. Um, but yeah, man, there's no, like that's my favorite piece of equipment. Like, yeah, I, buying all that equipment 15 years ago was one of the best investments I ever made because I put in about 2K for all the stuff I have and it's paid off. It's cash flow positive over time, right? I, I never have to pay for the gym. So... But my favorite pieces are not the fa- – I love my barbell, right? And I love my plates. But my favorite piece is the pieces I built myself, the sandbags that I built out of a, a Navy duffel bag you know, <laughs> with, with gravel from Home Depot and the sled with plywood that's got a spare tire that I got at a junkyard and and the strap. The, the way you pull the sled is with the seatbelt that I got – I cut out of a car in a junkyard. Damn. So like you know, that whole thing cost me like 10 bucks to put together. But it, it never breaks and it's it provides a ridiculous workout. So, you know – that's uh, a little bit my home gym. You got to mix it up though. And it's important because there's too many people that get stuck. I was so stuck in bodybuilding. I, yeah. need, to, I need to train like this. I can't train right. anywhere other way. And, you know, uh, I was never a fuck CrossFitter kind of guy. There's a lot of so many people. I don't know why there's so many people that just hate on that shit. Not me. Just, yeah. It's just like. I, I did CrossFit for a couple of years. I did, I did. I did a couple of CrossFit yeah. lesson classes, whatever you want to call them, uh, a long time ago. And I was like, all right, this is cool. It just does not the way I want to train. I'm, yeah. I'm good on it. But now it's kind of like I'm in that hybrid type training where I like the bodybuilding stuff still, but I just, I can't be bothered to go hit something for two plus hours right. at a gym. Yeah. You've been talking about that. Like, I just, I can't do it. I, it's just too much. So I, I, now I'm in that. I like the group fitness environment because working for yourself, you were talking about earlier, it could be lonely and it can be unless I'm at shoots, unless I'm doing things, it's just me and Kenji. So I just, I, I like going to those classes and jujitsu because I get to interact with other people. Yes. I don't, I've never been an office guy. I worked in retail. I worked in an office for a little while, but generally I was always sales. So I was always out by yourself and networking and doing different things. So then working for yourself, I mean, unless, like I just said, unless you're at a shoot, you're by yourself in your office, you're by yourself in your bedroom, you're just editing, you're just, there's nothing going on. Yeah, yeah. So now going to these classes, going to these places, you get to actually hang out and intermingle with people. Doesn't mean I'm going to go out and like, you know, go get, go get food or go get beers with everybody, every single person. But it's nice to just like have a, Hey, how you doing? How's your morning? Great. Uh, Okay. One thing CrossFit has done well though, is, um, you know, that there it's um, the good ones, the good, there's a, there's a, there's a a a variance between gyms, but the good ones, they have good communities. Yeah. And and that, that, that aspect of it is awesome. And I know there's a lot of other places now, like you had Dayron on the other day. He's, he's building community. Shouts to Dayron for F45 over here. And he's got his new Jericho studio opening up. We got to go show love there. Check that out. Yeah. Yeah, We'll have to go. We'll we'll go for like a class and just go chill chill with him. I have a lot of friends that do, I was told about group fitness a long time ago. Yeah. And um, my buddy Vinny, he's big on the group fitness. He was an Orange Theory coach. Now he has an ISI business down south uh, in North Carolina with his fiance Layla. She started it. He joined in with her, and now they're just like the dynamic duo head coaches. Uh, it's just, it's. Just, it, I can't emphasize enough how nice it is to just be done in an hour. That's really what it is for me. Like the workouts are good. Like they're great. Yep. Evan at OG does a great job, and Taylor, and they do a really good job programming everything and keeping it 
It's all you need. You don't need more than an hour in the gym. I, exactly. I, actually, keeping it interesting, keeping it different. It's really, really good what yeah. they do. But by, by the way, you can you can get a great workout in in five or ten minutes too. Just so just this. Oh one, yeah. This one's for. I mean, I know you know that. So this is mostly for the listeners. But like like this 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 next two weeks, I'm going to be traveling. It's the holidays. Got a lot of end of year stuff to do for work. I'm actually going to use that as an opportunity to take a break from weightlifting, and I won't be doing my one hour workouts this week. I'll be I'll be out of town. I'll probably just do 10 15 minute calisthenic workouts and I'll get, you know, and I'll stay in great shape. Yep. So so you don't always need to go to the gym for an hour, you know? Every yeah. t- you know. So well, it's also too mu- it's also too much on the body sometimes. Yeah. It's like uh, when I go when I would go to Bev's, I'd have too many machines sometimes. Like I just look around right. and I would I would say to myself, "Okay, well, I'm going to hit decline." And then you start looking and it's it it's Five machines that are just decline focused, and you go, which one do I want to do? Oh, right. well, maybe that one's a better angle. And then you do two or three decline sets, and then you're going to do upper, and then you're going to do the regular bench press, and then you want to do flies, and then push ups, and this and that. And oh, I haven't even done cardio, and I haven't done abs yet. And you look at the clock, and it's already been an hour and fifteen minutes that you've been there. And it just drain it drains on you. It depends on your goals too. Like I'm sure when you were bodybuilding, you needed to do the two three hour workouts. But I the prob- average person, I, I probably could yeah. have been more efficient with my time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's probably something that I can agree on. Yeah. For me, is that I could have been more efficient with the time that I was spending in the gym. I could have not hit everything for two hours. I could have taken less rest or made sure that when people started talking to me, I went, Hey guys, I just, I got to get out of here in an hour. You know, hit me up later. If you want to grab food, we could do that. I've never been good at that. I'm always flattered when people want to talk to me because, Oh my God, like somebody wants to take their time out to talk to me. But after 10, 15, 20 minutes goes by, you're just like, Oh my God, I got to get away. I have to go do other shit, man. I, I, and it's no offense, but people get, they haven't seen you or we were talking about it earlier with like the podcast, you know, you felt like, you know me, but we've only interacted once prior to this beat when we were at the fight with Scott and, right. uh, uh, over at the space in Westbound. Shout, West out, to, uh, Shout out to Savage Physio Savage. Doc. <laughs> That's my man right there. I need his level of shredded. Yeah. That's what I need. But, um, you know, and there's a lot of people that are like that. There are people that I don't interact with on a daily basis. I, I, do, I, truth be told, I don't interact with a lot of, besides clients and Tyler and my buddy Gabe and my mom, I, I don't really interact with people that much throughout my day. I get a lot of messages. There's a lot of people that message me, but to get back to everybody and to do my work and to and to put content out and answer replies on TikTok and YouTube and this and that, it's almost like the the social meter just goes all the way down. And at some point, it's like, I just don't even talk. My mom will call me and she'll start talking to me. I'm just like, mom, I just... I'm on E. Can can we talk tomorrow? I love you to death. I, you're the best. You're my favorite person on this planet. But I just, I can't, I just need to either play video games or just, uh, sometimes I'll put on, um, Endel is an AI generated app for soundscapes. It's pretty awesome. I, I've used it for a long time. I can give you, I think you get free, um, free or 50, or 50% off when I share my link. I pay for the year nice. every time. But basically, they do AI generated soundscapes, bro. I'll just sometimes I'll put one of those on. I'll just sit in the couch and just close my eyes, and it's so relaxing. Put everything on on airplane mode, turn everything off, and just be still and just listen to those soundscapes. And it's very nice. It's very important to make time to do something like that. You could call it whatever you want: quiet, stillness, meditation, spirituality, reconnecting with yourself. Whatever label you want to put on it that works for you. But it's, as you said before, you know, in today's day and age, like we can talk about food and exercise all day long, but attention, that might be the the battlefront that's the most important for, for, for us, for our children. Um, it's a problem. Uh, it's not, inser- it's not, it's a battle you can win, you know, if you, if you don't let it beat you, right? So you have to take control of your time. Uh if you are always responding to everything everybody else wants you to do and everything, and when I say everybody else, I don't just mean your friends and family. I mean like companies that want your attention, right? And a great book on this called Indistractable by Nir Eyal. But really, you know, you don't have to go out and read the book to know that your attention is is under attack right now, right? Yeah. Under attack. So you have to find ways. It's a little different for everybody. Um but you have to you have to put things in you have to set boundaries and put things in buckets sometimes and and sometimes you have to say no to things so um if you're all the other thing about that that's a kind of a, a side 
sideways connection is is stress, right? So obviously, if you're if you're always on twenty four hours a day, and you're never making any time to decompress, like you just mentioned with the soundscapes, or like meditation or something, then it's going to catch up to you. So you know you're you're not you're just not meant to be in sympathetic mode twenty four seven. It's just not you know it's just not good. So uh, for people who don't know what that means. A quick overview is that you have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, which basically like it, you're talking about it, you, one is where you're always like running from a tiger and the other is where you're like resting and relaxing. So you need time to, it, that's what fasting is about in a large, in a large way. You've talked so much about fasting, but fasting is about resting and digesting, right? So that's giving your body, your organs a break, right? But you got to do that for your mind too. And fasting does a little bit of that mentally as well too. Um, yeah, I don't know if I if I scooted around too much, but um, no, I'm always interested to hear like yeah. the things that you've experienced, the things that you've read, the yeah. information that you've absorbed over the years for for different topics, because that may be something that I haven't heard or that people haven't heard before, or maybe I know a little bit about it, just not a lot about it. So I always love, sure, I always love when when I hear about you know the things that you've been able to absorb. What I would say is this, you know, if you, you meditate, right? Uh, not as religiously as I need to. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm hit and miss. I feel better when I do meditate regularly. My issue is I get so relaxed when I meditate because I guess I'm, I'm actually turning my brain off finally right. to some extent that the stimulus that I'm constantly going through between everything, all the electronics, all like the people, all the clients, work, stuff like that, that I'm finally at rest that I actually fall asleep every fucking time. Every <laughs> fucking time I fall asleep when I meditate. And I wake up maybe 10 minutes, five minutes after the meditation is done, the uh-huh. self, the guided meditation. Uh-huh. Once it's done, I wake up and it's just silence. And I look around, I'm like, where, oh, where am I? And I go, oh shit, like I just fell asleep again. You see, when you're doing that, you're seated in an upright position? Uh, no, I usually I usually find I'm more relaxed when I lay down. So that's probably yeah. my issue. There you go. Yeah, that's right. my issue. So, so, wait, so, so you're just taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess i'm taking it out uh, you know you said earlier like you don't take your rest seriously enough that's your body telling you something right there right? yeah so oh yeah when i'm so i took off because I, I told you i wasn't feeling good uh the previous week so when i took off from the gym from everything i was sleeping hard yeah hard yeah. i mean we're talking deep uh, deep sleep i just i wasn't moving i was out and i was sleeping all day too and uh it's a tough it's a tough act to to battle i was talking to my friend riz in class today and she was we constantly have this there's another riz yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome <laughs> i said i'm the i'm the original i'm the i'm the older riz so i'm the original riz and she listens to the uh, podcast every now and then, so I hope she hears this. Shout out, Riz. Hey, Riz. Um, but uh, Riz number two. Yeah, Riz number two. <laughs> but we were so we were talking, and she she has the same problem. Like she's going to class six to six times a week, five to six times a week. And listen, these are hit classes. Yeah. These aren't just bullshit little things. Like we're running, we're rowing, we're doing the ski erg, we're doing snatches, we're doing a million and one different things. And you uh, uh, are just wearing our body down. And then on top of it, I'm doing jujitsu. And I'm taking care of the dog and I'm running around and all the regular daily responsibilities on top of all this. So it's like, okay, you're getting your physical health in order and you're burning calories and you're keeping your mind sharp because of it. But at the same time, you're wearing yourself down and you're not giving yourself the proper. So once again, that middle place, I I have a problem finding the middle because that's either drastic or not, you know, to one side or the other. It's never been able to do it. When I was bodybuilding, I was fucking bodybuilding. There was nothing that could take change my mind. I, I, I had one goal, one mission, that was it. When I started jujitsu, it was like, every I gotta go every single day. And then injuries started piling up, so I slowed down. And then once I slowed down, you're not as sharp with it. So then I made sure I went for the, for the more... Um, the more intricate days, the competition classes, the, okay, this class on Tuesday is a little harder than the Monday class or this and that. And I'll try to go three or four times a week and, but I'm still doing the OG stuff in the morning. And you just, your, your, your body just doesn't get five seconds to just chill. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. So what I would say a couple of things about that are one is, um, first of all, for you, 
there's a saying that like if you if you think you don't have time to meditate for ten minutes, you need to do it for twenty. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna sleep for twenty minutes now. So. I gotta sit up. I gotta sit, I gotta sit up. So, but that was kind of a, a half kidding. It's half yeah. serious. But also, though, it's not about. I'm not telling you or anybody listening to meditate. That's not what I'm about to say. No, it's amazing though, and yeah. there are there are truly so many benefits to it. So for it's sure. super important. But you can get so what we're talking about also is that there's other there's other paths, right? So meditation is great and you can sit with an app for five or ten or twenty minutes and do the guided session and that's great. Right. But that's not the only path. You also have your breath. You can do some breath work. You can do breath work. You can literally do like a four seven eight or a box breathe. Oh yeah. Shout to my man yeah. for bringing me a Christmas gift. <laughs> I, I appreciate him so much. But you can get started if you are stressed, if you are, if any of the things that we've said in the last 10 minutes hit home with anybody and they're like stressed or their attention is is being pulled in all these different directions, one minute of deep breathing can be a game changer, right? So I, you, listen, you saw me meditating before this podcast outside. Yeah. I do that before every meeting I have, every client meeting, every work meeting, every meeting, I do some form of meditation or breath work because it gets me focused. So what does Tony Robbins call it? The flow state. Yeah. It calls it the flow state. Yeah. Just being in the moment and getting ready. Uh, I listen to a lot of Bedros Koulian, which obviously I mention him almost every podcast. People are going to start thinking that I'm a fanboy because I am. But uh, it's uh, he talks about like before his podcast, before his speaking engagements, before anything like that, not so much a meditation, but uh, gets into goes into the corner, yeah. jumps up and down, starts saying, this is going to be amazing. This is going to be a great episode. We're going to change people's lives. We're going to give them a lot of value and information and this and that. Yeah. And generally the energy follows. I you mean, you you just, you put yourself in that high elevated state, you feel good. And because you feel good and because you're, ex you're, you're mentally clear, you're able to really give your all versus just, you know, if you had a bad morning, this and that, it's easy to just sink into that, well, fuck it type of mentality and mood. And, and just to add on that is even if you're not doing breath work or meditation, there are even other ways to decompress, to engage that parasympathetic thing that I talked about before the re the rest and recovery you know you can you can light a candle while you're cooking dinner and leave your phone in the other room right stuff like that to to just disengage and disconnect for just connect with yourself it's not really disconnecting yeah. it's connecting back with yourself so that's important and i believe that yeah. that's some of the stuff that i need i need that connection not only with myself but i need that connection with nature and the world yeah getting i'm not i'm nature. not a big nature guy like i'm really not i fucking hate because i know there's so much shit that can kill me out there like bears and mountain lions and right. shit like that and uh <laughs> i remember we were in colorado shooting for under armor we were in colorado shooting for under armor in Vail, and we were in the mountains and i was flying my drone and all of a sudden all you hear is just the mountain lion screams i went what was that and the dudes that are from colorado they go oh mountain lions i went just mad calm, right? Mountain lions, that's it? I go, nah, dude, fuck that shit. I said, I do not want that around me. I was like, S everybody got a gat? Everybody got a gun? Because if that thing comes near us, I need y'all to start firing because I don't want that thing to swipe me out. Uh, so, geez. but in saying all that, I do believe that I need to connect more, ground more, take your shoes off, yeah. put your feet in the dirt, and, the, and, and there's so much information and even scientific proof that it connects us to the earth and it makes us even more level-headed and less anxiety, less, less anxiousness just by just connecting and relaxing because all of these – all these electronic devices, all of them have EMFs and all of them have these different levels of radiation, not, not necessarily bad radiation like you know nuclear bomb radiation, but levels of radiation that may not kill us, but they affect us and they, they change the brain waves and the, the, the ability for us to actually just be present and in the moment. And uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed, I forget who said it this morning. Oh, it was uh, Dr. Hyman with uh, Mark Quick, who's the guy who uh, does a lot of... Um, coaching for reading and uh, learning with the brain. Okay. His book is his book that he just came out is called Limitless and it's supposed to be amazing. He just added a bunch of topics about AI, nootropics and other stuff that uh, keep it more present with uh, a post pandemic generation now. Mm -hmm. And um, he was just saying that like the, we're, we're living in a world of dings and notifications constantly. I turned off most of my notifications. Same here. I don't have notifications. I turn off most of my notifications. Yeah. The only ones that I have on are the phone, yep. text messages, uh, and then Instagram. It's supposed to the, – the issue though for me is that my business is on Instagram. Right. So if I don't promote the podcast, if I don't talk to my clients through there – like I, 
I lose out on potential money and, and engagement and eyes. I understand. If I didn't need it, and I said this many times, I honestly would probably delete the app. Listen, I've thought about just getting rid of my phone altogether, but my wife would probably kill me. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I need a bat signal for you so, then. That's it. Um, but uh, look, you know, I turn off notifications because they, at least for me, um, became too stressful. And I get a lot of messages like you. And I'm thankful for that. But I want to check them when I want to check them. I want to interject yeah. and just say I'm blessed that yeah. I do have so many people hitting me up. Just yes. like people want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. But there's only so much that somebody can just mentally handle in a single day with all of the stimuli and all the different things that are just firing in your face. Where until you're just like at that ground zero, no gas type level. And you're just like, I just, I need a, I need a break. I just, I can't answer anybody. I can't talk. I got to just be able to chill. I try to batch things. You do, you know. You may, I don't know if you batch any of your work, uh, uh, block, block, time block, block, time blocking. Yeah. You know what? So truth be told, and I'll let you continue. Mm -hmm. I just, and I want to share this with everybody. I just created all of my calendars to be more specific. Yep. So like it used to be like shoot. It used to be gym. Uh, no gym. It used to be just shoot. It used to be events. Right. Appointments. That's right. pretty much it. Uh, so now the calendars that I have for my business calendars is video shoot, meetings, Rizzles Productions General, Rizology for podcasts, social media planning, deep work. Good one. Discovery call. How many time? How much time on the deep work? Uh, to be, to be, to, be to be completely honest with you, I have not done any block. I just did this last week. Okay. I haven't blocked any time off for deep work yet. I need to. Yeah. I need four, to. Four hours. If four, you four hours for deep work two. would be nice. You know, yeah. maybe I could do like an 11 to two or 11 yeah. to three type of scenario yeah. in my office, turn off all the notifications, turn off everything. Maybe even just turn the fucking phone off and leave it on my desk mm -hmm. and then just start getting work done. Um, Deep work discovery calls for my introductory calls with clients to just see instead of just phone call or meet or or meeting. Uh, editing, photo shoot, and then work bills. And then on my personal calendar, which is my iCloud, it's appointments, bills, events, family. So anything I do with my family, right. gym, and church. So one thing that uh, – so I've done various kinds of time blocking and calendar stuff. Don't forget – you or listeners to if you're gonna if you're gonna be really disciplined about getting your calendar fully aligned and f basically blocked out for the whole day with whatever you want like if you put it on your calendar it's likely that you're gonna do it and if you don't it's probably likely that you're not don't forget to but people forget when they do this though like meal time like th it's little things like that that regular things like if so if you build in your whole calendar but you forget to put in lunch and dinner then um. You, you then it throws you off. So just don't forget to do the mund put the mundane things on there too, because they take time. Yeah, you know, um, running out of colors. Yeah, <laughs> I'm running out of colors to put on the calendar. Just put eat, you know. <laughs> uh, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, and another thing about planning that we touched on earlier, but I want to come. Uh, I forgot to say was if you can write down like a short list, three to five things, the top three to five things that you want to do tomorrow. The night before, when you go to bed, that can be a game changer for people too, right? So we have a lot. We all have a lot of stuff to do. Um, if you wake up in the morning and you don't know where to start, that's a problem. That's that that's decision fatigue starting already right there. Yeah. Right. So if you take five minutes the night before, okay, these are the top three things I got to do tomorrow. I gotta, I gotta call. I gotta do this prep for this interview. I gotta do this spreadsheet project and I got to, you know, write this blog post. Well, if you put them in order and you wake up in the morning, now you have no decision to make in the morning. You know what your number one is and you're good to go. Yeah. You know? I, and I, I've definitely had decision fatigue, fatigue uh, a lot of times, especially because of with Kenji, I'm on such a tight schedule with the dog yeah. that it almost, you know, he's very needy, love him to death. My man's laying behind our, uh, underneath our feet right now. I love him to death. He's the best dog. He really he's awesome. is. He's awesome. I'm so uh, glad I got to meet Ken. Yes, for sure. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm starting to bring him to the podcast again. Yeah. The issue was, in a very brief statement, because um, a lot of people have heard it before, the issue was my old office was 30 minutes away. Yeah. So being 30 minutes away, then he forms the epilepsy. It's like, I bring him there. The office is too small. He already doesn't like being there because the office is too small. He liked it when he was a puppy and he was smaller. The office is too small. Then he gets needy. He wants to go O-U-T. I got to spell when he actually, I got to spell when he's around. He wants to go OUT. Okay. Then you got to do that. You're ready to be a father. And you bring, yeah, right. Then you bring him back, but then his, but then he wasn't eating his food back then. So I think a right. lot of his, a lot of his seizure issues were due to blood sugar related mm. uh, things. That's that. I haven't been able to pinpoint a trigger. He had one seizure because he was afraid of something because I dropped a bottle and it made a loud noise and that 
triggered a seizure. Mm-hmm. But other than that, all of his other ones have been when he's deep sleep or he hasn't eaten his food very well for the day and this and that. Uh, so if he didn't eat his food in the morning and I brought him 30 minutes that way, so it's like, okay, well now I have to leave by 3 p.m. because we got to drive back. He's got to eat his food. He didn't eat this morning. It, it becomes too much to just mentally and then get your work done. If you think about all the time that you've saved by putting this office and how, and like moving here and having the office. Oh here, yeah. I mean, you just made yourself exponentially more productive. Oh yeah. And, and it's the only stress a couple, level went way down. Yes. Almost. Yes. It's only a couple hundred dollars more a month yeah. and it's over double the size. Yeah. So it's, it, it makes a lot of difference. And then the fact that I can go to the gym, do my thing. And then we had our podcast today at 10 and it's like, I get to just walk down and set everything up. I don't have to drive 30 minutes and you know how many times I forgot? Like, let's say if yeah. my tripod was in my tr- my car today, yeah. right? Tripod was in my car. Sometimes I would forget a cable that was sitting on my table that I should have brought. It's like the podcast starts in 45 minutes. It's a half hour drive there, you know, just to go back. Hey. And I forgot this fucking cable on the table. And I have to go back and get it and come back because yeah, just hassle, yeah. hassle. But anyway, uh, decision fatigue yeah. with everything that goes on, it, it the block everything off is good. My issue personally is when I see all of the calendar blocked off, Mm. I don't want to lie to myself. So if I block off four hours for deep work, I want to do deep work. And it's not that I won't do it, but if I get pulled in another direction, I feel guilty that I didn't stick to my own word of keeping my calendar exactly the way it needs to be. I understand. Everybody needs their own system. And I I, I don't have a perfect system, even for myself. I'm always, I'm always changing and adapting, seeing what works, what doesn't work. I think the key is just to, you know, find, try, try things, right? If you, if you go into the day with no plan at all, that's probably the worst. Yeah, that's the worst. So, yeah. There's a, there's a book that I just started reading, which I'm 10 pages into. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know the proper pronunciation. I believe it's Ikigai. Oh, Ikigai. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're going to talk about Ikigai now? We can talk about it. I have my Ikigai right there on that computer. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I just started the book. Yeah. So, uh, it basically is, from what I'm understanding so far, and obviously you're much more knowledgeable on this than I am. Oh, well, I've, I've, I, in the last few months, I started uh, doing an Ikigai. guy. Yeah, so I haven't done yeah. anything yet. Okay. I've just read 10 pages of the book. Okay. But I, I find it interesting that, uh, shout out to my, my boy, Matt Davis. Love you, Matt. He's always a supporter of the podcast. Him and his brother, uh, Chris, unbelievable human beings. Matt has inspired me to... Really just focus, uh, he's, he's reading a ton of books and he's really just like developing himself mm. to a really, really honorable, good man. Not that he wasn't before, but he's just really honing in on it now. Right. So I saw him post that book and uh, I got interested in seeing it. And it basically, to my understanding is, it's just the the deep work that you do on the passions that keep you going. Right, correct, yeah. So and so, I uh, I'll also quick shout out. I learned about Icky Guy from Matt Gray, who double mats. Let's yeah, go, double mats, triple yeah, mats, technically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he he runs a few companies. Uh, and he's very successful, and he talks a lot about how Icky Guy reading the book Icky Guy changed his life and also helped shape the future of his multiple businesses. So, uh, my Icky Guy is right over there. Uh, and. And once a month, I go back and review it. And yes, you have it. It's like a Venn diagram, right? And concentric circles, and in the and you know, it's things that you love to do. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to like you know, interrupt the podcast and, and pop it open now. You could, you could pop it open. You know, There's no interruption. Uh, if you want to see, yeah, 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 let's do it. Yeah, if you're cool with sharing it. Yeah, well, you got there is there is zero interrupting. You know, so but basically. If you if you do the work of going through an icky guy, it's gonna it's gonna tell you really basically what you should be doing with your life. Yeah. So do you uh, need Wi Fi or you or you have it? Probably need the Wi Fi, but uh, I got you. So you know, uh, you know what? Let's let's. I don't want to like have too much dead air. No, no, we're good, man. I, uh, yeah. There's there's no worry. I, I used to fear dead air. Truth yeah. be told, I used to fear dead air. I hated it. Okay. But the more I watched Rogan, the more I watched these other podcasters, sometimes it requires you to stop what you're doing in the conversation and pull yeah. things Open up. Them. And you could just... Rizology office? Yeah, Rizology office. It might ask me to let you in. Click click the, click the password. Ask for the password, yeah. Yeah, click the password. No, it doesn't give me that option. No, just I'm saying, click where it's set, where where you input the password. Yeah, click, yeah. just click there once. Yeah, yeah. No, it didn't ask me. Hold on. Please hold. It's a long password. Uh, I do all the uh, encrypted passwords because I'm a nut job. Oh, it's because I'm not even on the Wi-Fi. That's awkward for everybody involved. There you go. 
Let's see. There's Allergy Office. I'm joining it. I can't believe you brought up Icky Guy. That's- yeah, it's pretty cool, right? How things, how things like that. Yeah. All right, now click it again. Uh, hit cancel and then go back into it. Right. Now it may ask me. Let's see. Come on, Apple. Don't fucking fail us. Don't you fail us, Apple. Let's go Rizology. Rizology Office. Don't you fail us, Apple. Man, you failed us, you asshole. If I text it to you, does it come up to your phone or no? You, yeah, and that's another thing. While you do that, I do, I do most of my texting. Oh, no, because I have no internet here. So, Yeah, but if you join on your phone. There we go. I just sent you my password for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why. Um, or, or just do a hotspot on your, on your, on your laptop. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Let's just turn on the hotspot. Yeah, I'm uh, my 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 nut job ass. Ever since I had one person try to get into one of my accounts, that was it, man. I just every password I used the app called One Password. There's one password to get into the app, and then after you have that one password, and that's even a secure password that I have written down in a few different places. Once you have that one password that you input to get into the actual application, right. all your logins live there. My credit cards, I have my driver's license in there for the number just in case I don't have it with me. And when you go to create a new login for any type of a website or anything that you want to do, it'll make as many character encrypted randomized passwords for you. So I do that for everything because there's no way a fucking hacker is going to figure that out. Right. I mean, maybe they can, but generally they're looking for, oh, what's Nick's dog? Kenji. It's like, nah, asshole. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> I use, um, yeah, I use a uh, password, sir, like a last pass. Last pass. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Same thing. So here's my icky guy. And I know that the, list, the viewers won't be able to see they it. They probably won't be able to see it, but it's okay. But you, you, could, you could describe it to them. You can see it's got, it's got. Um, so d- describe north, north to yeah. um, northeast, southwest, all that, the way around. That's the way I do. That's the way you do it. So it's what you love. Followed by what the world needs, followed by what you can be paid for, and then the last one is what you are good at. So you start, and you got to take time and really think about these things. Yeah, it's not just something that you just spew out on paper and then that's it. It's the end all goal. No, and it, and it's not something that you'll even you'll do it more than once in your life. Like I said, I do it monthly lately, the last few months, and you know you start by writing out things that fit, and then as you move closer to the center. You, you see what's in the intersection of those things. So what's at the intersection of what you love and what the world needs? That's your mission, right? What's at the intersection of what you're good at and what you love? That's your passion. And you keep going around and around until you get to the middle. Eventually, you should, fall, you should find that certain words appear over, over and over again, right? And then you start to get closer and closer to the center of all these things, what you love, what you're good at, what you can be paid for, and what the world needs. That's your icky guy. So, you know, in the middle, I ended up with four words. So at the moment, my icky guy says transformation, coaching, community, and teaching. So, you know, you can ask me a question about anything you see there, but that, and, and that might change, probably will evolve over time. But those four things really speak to what I love, what I'm good at, what I can be paid for, and what the world needs. Yeah. And how long did it take you to assemble this? I'd say and how many revisions have there been? I'd say that took me about probably a half hour the first time I did it because I wanted to take my time with it. But you could do it even faster than that. Yeah. You know, and I've I, once a month I look at it and, um, you know, I look at it and if anything, I think I did a revision, you know, every couple of months. Like I would imagine as here's the thing we talked about entrepreneurship. The first time I did that was in September. And so fairly recently. Yes. Cool. And so from September to today, I've been really pushing my entrepreneurial journey, right? And so I've been learning things about myself along the process, right? And so then uh, two or three months later, I think in my my December my November revision of that, I changed a few. I was like, oh, I'm really, I really like this, or I'm really good at this. So I added a few things. So it changes, right? Like like we said, it's a journey. We're always evolving. But you know. I strongly recommend that you finish reading the book, Icky Guy. <laughs> and that well, I got another book. <laughs> <laughs> I got another book that's <laughs> piquing my interest now. How am I supposed to how am I supposed to finish that book? And that and that everybody, you know, who who think who who thinks that's cool, take a minute to try and either pick up the book or do their Icky Guy. And if somebody doesn't want to read the book and just wants the template, I'm happy to send them a link. Cool. You know? Cool. Uh, and then what is something that you really took away from it that like you've learned from yourself in the process? Yeah. So it's like, it's, 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 it's a good question. I think in doing that, 
it really tell it really affirmed who I am and what I want to do with my life, which is actually a big theme in my own life, right? So, so I think growing up for me, and part of the reason that I got into trouble even with my own health is because I didn't really know who I was or what I wanted to do with my life. That's just one layer. You know, there's many layers to everything. Yeah, right? onion, onion status. Onions, very onions, right? But not having a sense of purpose is a big problem in the world today. And I didn't have one for a long time. I do now, you know, so if you're not, you know, this Ikigai exercise can help somebody with that. Yeah. You know? And now going back to what kind of got you into the health issues yeah. and and the lack of purpose and whatnot, what was, I guess, what was the life like prior to the mad that's sitting in front of, in front of me today? Yeah. So like, oh, like, oh, like prior to like 20 years old, like, yeah. yeah. When, when I was at my worst. Yeah. Sure. So, so, you know, look, I think for me, this is a great question, Nick. So thank you. <laughs> so I would say that when I was a kid, I, I kind of would say in the area of purpose, I was always living what everyone else wanted for me or told me what told me I should do. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody in my life loves me very much, so this is not a complaint. Don't misunderstand. But you know, ultimately, every kid has to find their own way, right? So, um. If everybody wants to grow up to be a doctor or a lawyer and go to college and do X, Y, or Z or whatever they say, nothing wrong with those things, but they not be they may not be the things that you know you really want to do. And actually, it's very difficult for any kid who's 13 or 18 or 25, whatever age, to know what they want to do unless they try some things too, right? So it's like now, you know, I know that I love teaching and coaching because I've been doing it, right? So um, I don't know if that answered your question, what, you yeah. know, but we can go back and, and, and dive deeper into that. But I would definitely say that, um, establishing an identity uh, of my own for various reasons, like, look, look, I was adopted. Um, I was born into a family owned food business. So those two things are good things. And at the same time, there's another side to that coin because I was, I was had the opportunity. I was given great opportunity, right? Um, but I also learned along the way that that's not really what I want to do with my life for the long term. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you have to find your own way. So in in some way, this icky guy is very is such a helpful tool. If you're if you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your life, this icky guy can be a very helpful tool. You know. Uh, going back to yes. just your childhood and dealing yeah. and and the adoption and yeah. stuff like that. So what was that like growing up in that atmosphere? Oh, it's great. It was great. So, but I think that the 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 reason I mentioned it is because we're talking about identity and purpose. Mm-hmm. So there's always this like underlying, like very it's very minor, but in a way it's like it never goes away of like not like like trying to like sense of trying to figure out who you are. And I think all people probably have this to some always. degree. I'm still trying to figure out who I am. Exactly, right? So, I'm I'm a different person. I'm I'm yeah. a vastly different person than I was Five years ago. I mean, I, I, I would beg to differ that if I was in, I was to interact with some of my ex-girlfriends, they'd be like, who are you? Right. Like, who, who, who is this person? And that's good on me because that means that my journey has shaped me into the experiences that I've, I've, I've done. Like it's shaped me into the man I am today. I don't want to be the same. I don't want to have the same outlook on life that I had 10 years ago. I want to just be more informed. I want to change. I, I want to, because if you don't change, you die. That's pretty much what happens. For sure. For sure. I think that, and I was, I was adopted at birth. So it's not like I ever knew my birth parents. I always had my parents, you know, and they love me very much. And then, and then the other reason I mentioned the, the family business, which was a great thing, um, was that I was the fourth generation. So there was always this like back of my mind pressure that like, oh, shoot, I don't want to be the one that like this business, you I know, fucks this up. On. I don't want to fuck this up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so, so those things, you know, were just, just one piece of the puzzle for me. Yeah. Uh, two small, two small pieces of the puzzle, but uh, listen, I'm 44 and like, I'm really first starting to figure out what I love as far as, you know, a career goes and, and, I'm excited about it. Yeah, you know? that's, and that's good. I mean, yeah. you, you you taking all your experiences, you're learning from it. Uh, as far as the the food business, you, yeah. you're talking to me outside a little yeah, bit. Yeah. It's interesting. The organic food business. Now you're a health coach, a, a nutrition coach. Right. And actually, I had a question on here that um, – that, uh, yeah, so I had a question that says, does becoming a coach in the fitness focus in time also make you a life coach? Because uh, people are – 
probably asking for advice on life, not just nutrition when yes. they're working with you. So uh, there's a gap that bridges between food and mental health and just everything in general because everything is intertwined. The things that you're consuming physically, the things that you're consuming mentally, like everything has its purpose. But when you're talking about the organic food business and having that background, you learn a lot and you know a lot about the different foods and what they do to the body, I'm sure, because you've had access to them probably longer than the term organic has been around and, and a uh, buzzword. Yeah. Great. This is great. So now we've come back to food. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so I'm all over the place. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I had, see what happens is I have, I have a general guide of like uh -huh. start to finish what I would like to ask. And you know, some notes are a little crazier than others. And some, some are just guidelines of where we where where the conversation may lead, may not lead. And then as we start to have our regular con conversation, we start veering off into different topics and different uh -huh. things. So then to kind of bring it back to like where the episode generally would be, I try to uh, reel it back in like a Marlin. I, I got you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. In fact, <laughs> I knew that you were going to have a, a, like a plan, a, yeah. a, you know, a Nick, a Rizology plan. Yeah. Uh, but since I've been listening to so many episodes, I actually have a list of things that I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. I, I, I knew that we probably wouldn't even get to that. No, nah, it's cool. It's or cool. I'm, I'm, I'm all, I'm all ears, man. We, we could save that for a future day. Yeah. I'm all ears, man. We could hit a couple then hit another couple next time. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm with any of it. So, okay. So all those things you just said are connected. I'll try to wrap them in a bow. Um, being in the food business for 20 plus years, really growing up in the food business, absolutely informs what I do today as a health coach. And yes, I've been, I am a nutrition coach, but at the same time, I could sit here and talk, I could talk to you, I could talk to clients for hours on end all day long about food. But the reality is that most of my sessions are about change. And so, yes, essentially, I am a life coach. You could say that. Um, even if you looked at my like LinkedIn profile, like it said, it says like life coach, because that's just like what they have there. But so, yes. So I, I want to talk to you about food, like, and we're going to right now. But ultimately, Nick, at the end of the day, most people who have issues with most people, look, let's just dive right into it. Most people already know what to eat. They know what healthy food is. They don't need me to tell them like that vegetables are, are good for you. Right. Right. So like you can Google what is healthy food. You don't need coach Matt or anybody else to tell you that probably what you need help with if you're trying to lose weight is change. Yeah. Right. So, but let's talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, I've been in the food business a long time and, um, I've heard some of your episodes. You've talked about some of the problems with the food industry and they are real. They are real. Scary. It's, it's scary. What's, what is, what is allowed is what I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of yeah. briefly say, it, it frightens me what's allowed and what is uh, consumed on a wide scale basis because although we're being in a fitness mindset background, whatnot, and a lot of our connections are just that, they're fitness people, we believe that everybody has the knowledge or the general knowledge that we have on even on a smaller scale. And they don't. They don't. They don't know that pasture raised eggs are better than cage free eggs. They don't realize that grass fed beef needs to also technically be grass finished. I mean, sometimes there's a lot of people that go, oh, well, it's grain finished. It's like, yeah, man, just finish through. Let the fucking cow eat grass. Like, what's up with you? So like, there's a lot of pesticides on blueberries, um, harder shell fruits technically don't absorb the pesticides like softer, like the People don't realize this shit, that ju orange juice isn't really orange juice. It's not really just fresh squeezed oranges. It's a ton of sugar. And because there's there's a lack of information on real food pyramids and real nutritional information and guidance, the general masses just go, oh, well, I bought chicken and it was good. Like I figured that I'll just cook chicken for my family and that's healthy. Or I'll just get this farm raised fish because it's cheaper than the uh, wild caught fish. And, you know, I'm sure there's regulations in, in check to keep the farm raised to make sure that there aren't X, Y, Z, or maybe they just don't give a shit. They don't care. They see a food, they just go, screw it. Salmon is healthy or tilapia is healthy, which it isn't. It's fucking gross. And they just go, eh, screw it. We're good. And they just buy it. So uh, it gets me concerned that these things are allowed, the roundups, the glyphosates, all this bullshit is allowed in our food supply. And, you know, politicians want to talk about trying to have the, the people's best interest involved. And 
they allow this shit to just go through because they're getting a kickback from the bigger company. So I'm going to take this in a slightly different turn than you might expect. It's a lot. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. So I'm going to say yes and. You've heard of the yes and, the philosophy? Okay. Okay, yes? Yeah. Okay. So yes, I'm down with everything you just said, mm -hmm. big time. Like, I, like I'm an organic food salesman, okay? So I've been, I, I don't, I don't, I, I only buy basically all the kinds of foods that you just talked about, right? I vote with my wallet and I believe that um, whenever possible, other people should too, right? Because these like, Mark Hyman wrote a huge book on this called Food Fix. Yep. Um, you know, it, it, it's 500 something pages, I think, and it, and it details the, the depth of this problem. And these problems are, you know, uh, way beyond the scope of any individual to fix. Yeah. However, what you can do is, uh, my, here's my concern. My concern is that um, this can become very overwhelming for people to think about. Yeah. Okay. Right out the gate. And then, and then you layer in the fact that you've got, you know, everybody on Instagram and social media who are saying, you know, do this, you know, be carnivore, be vegan, be paleo. And then streams or there's right. So, and then, and then it gets very confusing. So, so here's my antidote for that. Um, couple of things. First, there's no such thing as a good or a bad food. You may want to challenge me on that. I don't know if you're going to agree or not, but I thought we would talk about that. A good or a bad food. I, I believe that um, there are foods that people, their digestive tract and them in general, they don't do well with. I would, I would argue that uh, oatmeal has been plagued, at, play, not plagued, oatmeal has been put on a pedestal as an amazing food to have for breakfast, but then when you do your research and you find out the amount of glyphosates that are in all oatmeals, not even just that, you know, you think you're going to buy Bob's Red Mill and it's going to be healthier for you because it's a organic and natural brand, there's still glyphosates in it and there's still extra bullshit in it. And theoretically, that could be very hard on people's digestive tracts. When you say there are no bad foods, are you saying that the foods in general across the wide spectrum... There's, they're not bad. It's how they're harvested and how they're created and cultivated. Is that what your argument is? I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain. So I totally understand and I'm down with the notion that big food, right? Like big conglomerates like Monsanto and, you know, all these others, whatever, you know, are doing things that are not good for the planet, people or the planet. So I'm on board with that 100%. But I'm just saying, like, I also want to remove the judgment from things. Okay. So when I say there's no such thing as a good or a bad food, I'm saying if you put an apple on this on this counter, that's neither good nor bad, right? So it may be it's, How was the apple created though? There's there there's a there's a lot of variables in that. Well, I'll explain. So, look, let me put it another way. What you said what you said what you said you did say something in there and what you said that I think is closer to the truth, which is it, it really depends on what works best for you. Right. So and then you have to be honest about that. Is it really working good? For, what best for you? Is it really making you healthier? Well, if you're eating Doritos all the time, probably not. Mm -hmm. Right. However, it's important to, to, to like, to, to be non-judgmental, at least I think about food for, because when you go down the road of judging things as always being good or bad, then you end up in that in, in with negative emotions, with shame, with eating problems and with all this fighting back and forth, right? Like, carnivore, paleo, you know, mm -hmm. vegan, non-vegan, all this stuff, like then that's, that leads down that path. So here's what I'm saying. If you were starving on a desert island, like you could put a Snickers bar here right now and I would not be tempted to eat it. But if I were starving on a desert island, wouldn't that Snickers bar be good? Yes, but does it mean that it's good for you? No. It would be is good it, for me in that moment is only. Is it going to give you the calories that you, that you need for the time being? Yeah. Uh, are the calories healthy? Technically, no. Well, that's an interesting question, right? So a calorie is just a calorie. Yeah, correct. Macros, it, when it's broken down, it's a carb, a fat, and a protein. But also at the same time, how that carb, fat, and protein is, like what it actually is made up of does matter. I believe it does. I believe I, that- I do too. I believe I that too. if you- And I, I, I don't-, I don't and I, No, I, I, I like conversations like this Absolutely. because it, it, it challenges what I believe. It challenges what you believe. It challenges what people think. Yes. Uh, and you have to have different perspectives on things to, you know, to to be able to do stuff like that. Um, if you're gonna, it, you know, if we're gonna take a cal calorie from an apple and calories from a, a handful of Sour Patch Kids, you know, maybe they have the same amount of carbs. A serving of Sour Patch Kids has 
32 grams of carbs. A regular apple is probably going to be anywhere from 16 to 30 grams of carbs, depending on how big the apple is. Right? The carbs are carb. But right. what Sour Patch Kids are tons of fucking processed sugars of and course. red dyes and this and that. So yeah. those calories, although calories and just that, they're not technically good for you because of everything that they're used to create them. Okay. Are you ready for my rebuttal? Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> I actually, we agree. But what I want to add, I think what's, we're actually both saying the same thing in slightly different ways. Mm-hmm. So yes, everything you said is true. Well, I'm going to give you an example of where the Sour Patch Kid is actually good for the person who's not starving on a desert island. Go for me. Okay. If oh, you post workout, is that what you're going to say? No, 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 no. I'm not. Right, in, sorry, I, I jumped the gun. I no jumped fans. the gun. It's okay. I know that. I tried jumping the gun to be cool. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, where it is is when it helps you with your adherence. So, so uh, it's like Alan Aragon says in his book, The Flexible Diet. Shout out to Alan Aragon, super smart guy. If adherence is everything. So the reason why most diets fail is because people can't stick to them, right? Um, So what matters most is what you can stick to, ultimately. So if you need to to have three Sour Patch Kids every Friday night in order to have the rest of your diet be super clean and make you like super Nick, then that's what you need. Then those Sour Patch Kids for you are good. Now, obviously, I don't recommend people eat Sour Patch Kids unless... Is going to help them hit their long term goal. So then we go back to the original argument of there's yeah. no bad food. Cellularly, it's technically not good. Uh, okay. So are you asking me? I think what I'm saying. I think we're saying. I think we'll have to find a way to to find common ground on this. I think yeah. what, what I'm saying is in that moment. What I'm saying is what the what I'm what I'm. You're re- saying don't demonize specific things because everybody has a use case for them. And language matters yeah. also. And language matters. It's like it's like can we find a better word to use than bad around food? Right. So. It is the sound. but, uh, but is, does that in turn make it softer just just to, just to make it seem easier for people instead of just calling a spade a spade? That's the question. By saying we don't want to say it's bad, I'll tell you what, Nick. No, no, I don't think so because okay. I, I, because I've spoken to too many people who. Here's the reality: like we, me and you can maybe maybe there are some people who are okay. I'll concede that there are some people for whom it's okay to use the language good and bad, but those are going to be typically the minority of people who already have their health under re- in check and are very consistent, who are have a healthy relationship with food, then maybe I would, but but the problem is that most people don't. But then we're sugarcoating it. That's the issue. I agree with you. Yeah. I do agree with you because some people need their hand held. And they're confused. And some people really need that, no, 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 like that rub on the back. And it's like, here, we're, we, we can work regular things into the diet instead of like the people like me where I've had years of experience dieting. I've had good relationship with food. I've had bad relationships with food. Right. And, I've, and I've, I've also had the years of knowledge of understanding that calories are technically calories, calories in, calories out. But- not all calories are created equal. And it doesn't necessarily mean that because I eat 40, I 40 Sour Patch Kids and I eat two apples and uh, and they're the same carbs. Uh, you know, I, I, I get that it's the calories. But for me, I know what created which. And, and to me, on a cellular level, on a health level, having things like – because we're using Sour Patch yeah, Kids yeah. As, a, as an example. It's okay. And once again, not that you're – We're probably going to get sued by the Sour Patch Kids. Fuck company. Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> assholes. I spent mad money on this shit. All right, so the first ingredient is sugar. The second ingredient is invert sugar. Right. The, no, thir- no, no. the third ingredient is corn syrup, mm-hmm. then modified cornstarch, then contains less than 2% of tartaric acid. Don't even know what that is. Citric acid, which we see in everything. Natural and artificial flavors. Red 40, blue 1 – yellow five, yellow six, and titanium dioxide. That's fucking crazy. Right, right, right. That's so, crazy. It's all good, Nick. So I personally- And this is coming from a Sour Patch Kid addict. Right. Like I would eat bags. Right. I will, you will never, so if you listen, you're going to hear, uh, I'm going to respond, but you won't hear the word BAD come out of my mouth. That's okay, please, okay. please. So I won't eat those, Okay. I'll probably never recommend to a, a client or friend that they should eat those, right? Right. So, but where I would be cautious of is this: if we start labeling everything good or bad, you know, in, right, then people go into the supermarket and they don't know what to do and they panic. And but then we have to we have to give them the options to see the good, to really f- unfiltered see the good. 
Because when they when they when they snake through that aisle and they go into the middle aisles uh, where you should be staying on the outside of the aisles because that's where the food that goes bad stays generally. Why, why not try? Why not try? Instead of being so black and white about it, though, why not consider using less black and white language and say, eat these things as much as possible and eat these things as little as possible. You could do that, but then I feel like giving people options as somebody who has yo-yo dieted for years and on and off season for bodybuilding, you know, that person that has those five Sour Patch Kids every Friday night, oh man, those were good. The rest of the bag's right there. Let me have six. Maybe I'll have eight tonight. Well, It's very easy to go off the deep end by having that in your taste versus maybe saying like, don't consume these foods because. Uh, well, actually, that's what I work with people on is 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 uh, going off the deep end, right? That can be mitigated, but I would I would I would say that you're right, and in, in addition to that, um, and you could say I'm incorrect in things that if you believe that. No, I'm, I think I'm all ears. For I, some people like it's, free, it's a free sh- conversation. I want to hear. You're right. You're right in the way that if there's food available, you're going to eat it, right? So if it's in the house, you're you're probably going to eat. it. I know right? that so I right. can't have Yasso Greek yogurt right. bars, which which by the way. Tyler and I, we house those things when we buy them. And then the issue is they have seed oils in them. Right. So now we don't buy them at all. But I don't buy them because I know I'm going to, I'm finishing that box. It's sitting in the freezer. I'm finishing the box. Right. I can't buy granola. If I buy granola, it's a wrap. That granola is gone by 24 hours. I, I, I don't, I have a lot of self control, but when it's in the house and I'm thinking about it, I know that I can't have it in the house. I just, I don't want it there. If I had, if I buy ice cream, like I had my ice cream last night, I had my one scoop. If I have, if I if I buy a pint of ice cream, you're gonna pint, eat the whole thing. Pint's gone. So here's the thing, though. Here here's the other side of that coin. This is a cool pen, right? It's nice, right? Very nice pen. You can't touch that pen. Okay. I won't touch that pen. No matter what we do for the next hour, you can't touch that. Pen. I gotta touch the pen. I have to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but you see what I mean. Yeah. If you tell someone they can, this is the thing: is that if you tell someone that they can never eat something because it's bad, they're gonna they're. I, I, well, yeah, they're, they're going to infatu- they're they're, be infatuated with it. They're, they're going to want, want it even eventually. more and more. So, so it's Which is why flexible dieting is a nice thing exactly. that, that has come around, and yes. it's not so black and white. Uh, yeah, I, that's all I'm saying. I agree with so black and white. I agree with you, yes. but on my yeah. terms, I have to be— Maybe you have to be more black and white than the average. I have to, I have to yeah. be because I have to be more rigid on the things that I know and the things I have to stick to. If I'm not— By the way, I'm very black and white. Full yeah. disclosure, like, I probably eat— like, and I just sat here and said that there's no such thing as a good or a bad food and that you should be flexible. Nick, I probably eat like more discipline than 97% of people on earth, right? right? So there's very few things that are in this category that you are thinking of as bad that I, I don't eat any of them. So I get it. I really do. I just, I think where I think where I'm coming at is all, where I'm coming from is also here is that I know a lot of your listeners are high level athletes or BJJ or, you know, or they're, or they're very healthy. Right. But I think that the average person who is lost in the supermarket and overwhelmed with all this stuff that's on social media, I think they need to start with the basics, which I agree with. The yeah. basics is what is a great yes. place to start. But at the yes. same time, it just, it becomes like, a the, the continued softening of the world, which we're seeing. It's just the constant, like not being able to say what it is that's actually happening, what it's, what it, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like by saying, that's yeah. not a bad food. No, it's a bad food. It's like you shouldn't, a- you shouldn't consume it or you should consume it in moderation. Yeah. I, the judgment thing, listen, uh, uh, the other thing about the judgment that I'm, why I'm such a stickler about language. It's also why I don't use the words. I have a list of curse words, coach Matt's curse words. Oh, yeah. And they are, but B U T, uh, Try, T-R-Y, and a few, there's a couple others, should. There's a few. Okay. So language really matters. So the way we talk to ourselves yep. really matters. The way we talk inside our heads to ourselves, the way we talk to other people. And so do, so to, so does it matter with food also. So language around food is very important. So that's why I'm such a stickler for the judgment thing. Because I have seen and work with people who like literally like are like very, very like high levels of anxiety and stress. And that ultimately doesn't help them become healthier yeah. around what to eat or what not to eat. So people are sometimes shocked when I tell them you can eat whatever you want. Now, it doesn't mean there's no consequences. You can eat whatever you want and be very healthy as long as you're aware of the consequences. Now, obviously, like, you know, I'm going to promote, you know, like eating whole foods and not having all those things that are poison, of course. But let's like remove the restriction and the judgment as much as we can and make it like actually fun to live our life and not like feel like walking into the supermarket is like uh, torture. Yeah. I just feel like you give you, you give you, you give people too much rope to hang themselves. That's really what it comes down to. 
Fair enough. Fair That's enough. what I've seen, yeah. but just from friends of mine that have asked me yeah. for tons of dieting advice. I used to give advice to everybody. I was so tired after a while. Yeah. Everybody would ask me when I body built, when I did all my shows and I did this and that. Everybody asked me for for like questions on, well, what can I do this? And I used to write diet plans out. I used to go crazy and this right. and that. Two days in, they're done. Two days in, they're done. I'm like, what a waste of time. Right. And I just, I found that it, I was much stricter back then, but even still to this day, like just telling people like, these are the macros you can hit and this and that, and this is what you should watch and this is what you should do. There, without question, there is way too much information. Pretty way much. too much information. That's why I try to and, but this is, yeah. but this is a, this is a journey. This is a, a life. That's why they call it a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. This is something that you have to understand and learn every year. Like things that you thought were once healthy are not healthy anymore. You know, the artificial sweeteners and all this extra stuff. It's like, oh, no, it was widely accepted that these are fine. They're just they're made in a lab and they they're not supposed to spike your insulin. This and that. But now we find out years later, which we most of us knew all along, they do spike your insulin and they do trick your body that you're eating calories and that you're eating and consuming sugar. And it's really not good for you. Oh, for sure. And also the dose really matters. Important to say. So, like, it's like I used to be I used to say, like bang my fist on the table and say, read the ingredients, read the ingredients over and over again. I've backed off that a little bit. I still read the ingredients of everything I buy and I recommend that people do. You just read some online out loud on the air. Uh, it's important to read the ingredients, but I think it's also important not to, uh, like I said, drive yourself into a panic over the ingredients. The dose matters. So like if you have one Sour Patch Kid, it's not going to kill you. Yeah. Just one, right? But if you're eating them every day, that's going to be a problem. So, yeah. you know, I, I think we can agree on that. Oh, without question. The people that consume soda every single day, yeah. uh, drink like a, a liter of Coke yeah. every every once a week. It's like, dude, that's so that's much, bad. so and, much and sugar by the way, and I, so much shit. I grew up, you know, uh, I like, I talked about some of the reasons why, like, I was had trouble finding my own way with my own health journey. Like, food, obviously a huge one, right? So I grew up eating the standard American diet. Eating an entire pie of pizza, eating seven bowls of garlic knots, you know, and, and then eventually in college, alcohol came into the picture. So those things will kill you, you know. Yeah. Um, so the dose matters, right? So can you? So it's like I wrote a, a newsletter about this: uh, is bread healthy, right? So I've been it depends, right? So and that's that's my like basically my answer to everything nowadays. The the older I get, the more experience I get, the less I know for sure. Right. And so actually I, I respond to almost everything. When people ask me like, Matt, should I do A, B or C or is this good or bad? I say, maybe it depends. I don't know. Let's see. Let's find out what works best for you. Yeah. So, you know, is bread healthy? Right. So it depends. I haven't eaten gluten in 15 years. Okay. You can ask me about that if you want, but I've been gluten free for a, before it was cool. My mom's you know? gluten free. She has celiac. Oh, I got I she has celiac. Karen, yeah. Karen, I got to give you a call. Karen, you know? so. celiac. She has she has ulcerative colitis. Okay, so which to me makes makes a little yeah. bit of sense of why I, I have digestive stuff. Right, and so you know, and so is bread healthy? Well, you know, it depends, right? So sourdough like, is he- sourdough is technically healthy if yeah. it's, if it's Homemade, made the right way. Legit sourdough, yeah. sure, but you know. For me, I don't eat gluten because it doesn't work for me, but wheat bread is fine for some people. Yeah. You know, now, of course, the dose matters. So how much and how often is really what the quality? Yes, the quality matters. And yes, the dose matters. Right. So so is it true that there are good calories and bad calories? That's another book by Gary Taubes. Yes, I'll concede that, you know, that Diet Coke, uh, that, I mean, a calorie is a calorie. So, you know, an inch is an inch, right? So those, the, the, a unit of measure is a unit of measure. But it's not the same. I also will concede that it's not the same thing to drink a can of Diet Coke as it is to eat an apple. Those are two different things. One has lots of healthy things in it, and the other doesn't, right? Yeah. And fiber. Right. So Whereas the soda and the sugar are just going to go right through you yeah. and spike your insulin, and but there's the going to do- be nothing. But the dose matters. Like, so basically what I'm saying is if you're, a, if you're an obese person who needs to have one can if, – if what you need right now – and remember, things are always changing. It's a journey, right? So if you're an obese person – who um, has, you know, who is willing to, who wants to say, you know, change their diet and start eating healthy and a whole bunch of whole foods. But in order to do that for right now, you're just not ready to give up your Diet Coke for this. So I'll say, if I were coaching that person, I would say, okay, great. If you're telling me that you're going to stop eating McDonald's and all this fast food and start eating a whole bunch of whole foods and start to get, and then you just, you're just going to hold on to the Diet Coke for now. And maybe you'll reconsider later. Of course I'm going to say yes, because that's going to get you moving forward, yeah. right? And then we can revisit the Diet Coke when you're ready. If you're not ready to give it up right now, that then then that's that's what I'm saying. Then you need that right now, you know? Yes, would it be better if you could give it up right now? Of course, but if you have to do what you are actually able to do. Mm-hmm. 
you know? Yeah, when I when I first got my health pro, uh, prognosis or diagnosis, whatever whatever it is, mm-hmm. uh, back when I was in 10th grade and I was 270, and they basically said, like, hey, you're going to need an insulin pump if you keep getting heavier. And you're, in what grade did they tell you that? 10th grade. Jesus. Yeah, I was 270. And yeah, I, uh, I've heard that number on the air before. I mean, yeah. I can't even picture you that big. Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, seeing it's yeah. seeing it's very interesting. Yeah. And um, so anyway, so I, I was working with a chiropractor at the time, and he basically taught me macros before mac before anyone really it was a buzz thing. I've been dying to ask you what's your uh, macro? What's your usual? Right now, yeah. Right now, I'm at, and I, I've been loosely over it every day to be honest with you. And I'm getting a little fluffy, like not fat, but I'm getting a little like my abs aren't as sharp right now. Uh-huh. Uh, so I have to get like right back on it, but it's it, listen. It's, it's Christmas. This is the leanest I've been year round for like to be able to just chill in the holidays. Yeah. I still got like the V cut, uh, you know, on my on my lower abs, but my the abs right above the V is like always gets. Fl- that's like the first spot that gets a little little. We should talk about abs too when we're done with this point. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm eating 190 protein. I'm eating 75 fat. And I'm eating. Oh, you're tracking in grams, not percentage. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. 190 protein, 75 fat. Yep. And I'm eating uh, 180 carb. But like I said, I'm probably I'm probably at like 220 to 250 carb every day. Right. So now. you're so you're a lo- you're okay. So you're roughly one to one on fat protein to carb. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, so in preparation for coming on the show, I haven't uh, I haven't counted my calories in a long time. It's been a couple <laughs> of years, but I, I I do it, and we can talk about that. That's a whole rabbit hole. Probably could do a whole podcast on that. Um, I wanted to just kind of track my macros for the last four or five days just to see where I was just at. Just see, yeah. Yeah, I was using this uh, Joy. I haven't used, I didn't use the app. You, you, my macros plus is the app that I use. I'm I really love it. Yeah. I use the Joy, I use the Joy app, but um, basically it came out like I'm eating, that's you at 270. Yeah, nice. I, I, I'll, I'll show, I'll text you later a picture of me at uh, at 220. I'm 160 now. It was, okay. two, it was about 220. Yeah. Um, You're saying it's calorie tracking the apps. Yeah, so I think I'm at. I actually eat a very high fat diet. Uh, I probably eat. I eat a ton of meat, but it turns out that I eat a lot of more fat than I always realize. I like probably fifty percent or more. I'm not on doing a keto diet, but I just eat a lot of eggs and nuts. Like mm-hmm. I eat. I'll 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 sit and eat eight ounces of nuts as a snack. That's like a thousand calories of fat, right? Yeah. There, you know. Yeah. So so, but look, I mean, I look, do four, I do four or five whole eggs every morning. It, it, yeah, yeah, me too. I had five eggs before I came here. I did. I yeah. did five. I did four eggs this morning. Yeah. And then I made Kodiak cakes. And people don't realize that eggs are, even though they're considered usually a protein, they're basically almost all fat. If you yeah. look at the macros on it, five, f- uh, five grams of fat for yeah. e- for every egg. Yeah. So so look, you know, people people, I'm sure people out there, especially beginners. I know a lot of your listeners are advanced with macros, mm-hmm. but beginners don't- actually, truth be told, a lot of the, I don't know if a lot of people that I know track macros. Yeah. I think there's a there's a good there's a handful of people that track macros, but I do believe that. For people to actually sit there and track all their food and this and that, it's a special kind of person that yeah. does that because it's not easy. And it, it's I, not. I have a, I have right now. I have a, how many days streak right now? It's hard. And while you look that up, I, I want to hear the streak. Or let me know when you get the answer. It's like I was doing this the other day, and I remembered because it's been a while. Tracking your calories is simply, it's just not something that's connected to the act of eating and going through your day. So that's why it's hard. It's like you're going through your day, you're going through your day, you want to have a snack or something. The thought to whip out your phone and plug it in just doesn't automatically pop up. Yep. You know, um, while, while Nick looks at that up, you know, I'll, I'll say also, there are many different methods of counting or tracking your calories. You can use an app, but that's not the only way. If you're curious to learn more about that, you can do it using pictures. You can do it using a uh, paper and pen. You can do it using your hands. So there's, or you can not do it at all. So there's a, a wide variety of options out there for people. I can't find it. Why isn't it? It's not popping up. It usually just, I'm just making sure I didn't miss a day because sometimes it, it the will. The streak f- is broken. Yeah. Imagine the streak is broken. No, it's all the way to, this, I'm all the way in November right now. I've been tracking. Fuck. Yeah. On my macros plus, I was on. I was on like, oh, there it is, two hundred forty-seven day streak. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. and for some people, like once they do that, then they're good. Like, well, yeah, that's like with the alcohol right now for me. I haven't been drinking alcohol since March, yeah. so it's like I'm not an alcoholic. Never was. I just it wasn't serving me. I didn't feel good after I drank, and I want to stay mentally sharp. And more and more information comes out with the carcinogenic, you know. Uh, Byproducts of drinking alcohol, uh-huh. even on even because technically technically the 
the uh, accepted allotment is like two drinks a week, but uh, we all know when you- Accepted by who? Yeah, by, yeah, yeah. By, by, the, by the same people that are telling us that there aren't yeah. shit in our food. They're still teaching, I don't mean to cut you off, but they're still teaching some BS stuff in school to my, I have 11 and 13 year old kids about the food pyramid. Of course. It's unbelievable. Of course, no, it, what, what was on the food pyramid? Uh, Lucky uh, Charms was above a steak? Yeah. Yeah, go fuck yourselves. Uh, that, that, that's, 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 that is my statement to the health administrations and this and that. The people that give the guidances and all of these research and all this bullshit bullshit you know the the whole the whole breakfast is the most important meal of the day propaganda from corn from kellogg's back there's actually the day. some validity to the breakfast thing by the way uh some about validity. it being important yeah so I, get, I, I believe it depends, it depends. on what it your depends. situation is yeah. uh I, I i always ate breakfast i always did i yeah. listen there's days where i fast into the afternoon there's days where i eat breakfast i, I just i don't believe that it is the important the most important meal of the day i believe the most important meal of the day is the replenishment after exercise not necessarily that that um, uh, catabolic or window, and I don't believe in any of that shit. But I, I do believe that there is some validity to eating after an exercise to refuel your muscles, not necessarily replenish your glycogen because it's twenty four hours stores anyway, and you're burning off the stuff that you ate yesterday, not the stuff that you ate just now. Right, right. Yeah, you, you. Everything you said is one hundred percent true. Okay. I think what's important for the average person is that they that that may not be the most important thing to worry about. So oh, no, I'm talking about like this yeah. is as you go as you get deeper in your fitness lifestyle yes. journey, yes. you learn these things. You said something a couple of podcasts ago that I really liked. You said we were talking about fasting and you said I'm not religious about it. That's the key to me, mm -hmm. right? It's like like I said, don't be so black and white and uh, 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 try to not to be so black and white. I was so glad to hear you say that because I know you talk a lot about fasting and fast all the time. I do something called I uh I called it situational fasting. So it means that like, yes, I've tried, I've tried scheduled fasts, but actually what I do is it's, un I let life, whatever, situ when life hits me with a situation that I need to not eat, then I just roll with it. And that's when I, yeah. that's when I don't eat. Yeah. So that's what works for me. For some people, here's the thing, right? So at the end of the day, losing weight or gaining weight, some people have trouble gaining weight, so it could be either way, but weight balance is simple, but it's not easy, right? So yes, calories in, calories out. If the balance is shifted, you're going to either gain or lose. That is true, right? Very simple. I just explained it in 10 seconds, but it's not easy in practice. So, so here's the thing. Should people do intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating or whatever variety of fasting or whatever, it depends. It depends on what works best for them. So like one meal a day, that's great for some people, but it's not great for some people who want to have dinner with their family, right? So if it's going to ruin your social life, you probably shouldn't do it, right? If it works for you, that's fantastic. That's great. Yeah, I actually, cutting, cutting off your food at 8 p.m. is sometimes tough yeah. if you're going to go out and have dinner with friends. Yeah, I agree. So there are days. So that I'd say I suggest not trying not to be so religious about it ultimately, because what happens then is this. This is the same thing that happens with the judgmental thing, Right. What happens is if you always labeling everything good or bad, or you treat fasting or any other meth modology, veganism, carnivore, paleo, whatever, as a religion, as if you, if you think it's like part of your identity, then you could be in a, it's a slippery slope because then what happens when you have to eat dinner after eight o'clock, then you feel like you broke something. Yeah. And now you're feeling shame and disappointment and judgment. And then what happens when that happens, then you're going to make more bad decisions. Yeah. Or you're going to beat yourself up about it. So- just watch that slippery slope, right? So it's like, so should should you, fa like fasting is a great tool for many people to reduce their calories and thus get in the right uh, direction, whether they're trying to lose or gain, right? So it's actually, you know, I'm not so sure. And the science says that um, it's the fasting that actually it makes you lose weight. It's the fact that because you're fasting, you're probably eating less. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. Well, nothing I, wrong with that. Well, there's also yeah. there's also the point that you're 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 dropping water weight yes. and you're you're giving your digestive tract yes. time to push everything else out. Yes. I mean, before I did the 48 hour fast, I've never felt an empty stomach. Uh, I've done 24 uh, yeah. hours. You talked about that the other day. And water, bro, plop, <laughs> empty. It's just so weird. Your stomach literally feels flat. Yeah. It's such a crazy feeling. So, 
on the episode where Tyler and I are going to, it's actually right here, a fasting episode with Tyler. We had to move it. It was supposed to be episode 79. You know, we're going to go through how we got into it, what piqued our interest to try it, trying it initially, the idea behind the 24 to 48 hour fast, research that backs the fasting. We want to have all of that information ready, readily available. Mm -hmm. You know, the autophagy, and that's another buzzword now. And yeah, But it's, it's real. It's a real yeah. thing. Your cells need to repair themselves. Your cells need to repair Absolutely. themselves. But I think the biggest thing for me that I enjoy about the fasting is the, not even the weight loss, not even the feeling tighter, because you do feel tighter when you're fasting. There's less there's less water weight and this and that, even though you're drinking a ton. Uh, what I really enjoy about it is the the break on my digestive system. That's right. That's because a, I, I just it's just nonstop. Digest, yeah. The the American diet and just the 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 widely allowed viewpoint of snacking and continuous eating and this and that, it you know. I can't say that we we've all done it. We all do it. It's just it is what it is. It's yeah. just but it's it, it's something that is so detrimental to stop and give yourself a reset. Very important. On top of like the gut microbiome and resetting your gut and how important all of that is, especially if you have insulin sensitivities and whatnot. This a lot of this helps you, but then how you get back out of the fast is just as important. I'll tell you right now also regarding the sleep, the interruption of sleep. I've been wearing this whoop for like 4 years. And without fail, and I have the data on it, every time I have a little alcohol, yep, or or a lot, if I, which I don't really do anymore, but you know, or have some food late at night, my sleep is shot to hell. Yep, and the numbers show it. Yeah, if I so, eat if I eat too close to bed, it's 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 pretty it's pretty detrimental to my now, sleep as you well. You can fall asleep. But you're not getting quality sleep. That's yeah. the problem. REM. Because your body is working. Yeah, REM. Right? You're yeah. really not. So yeah. that, that was always something interesting to me. When I was bodybuilding, a lot of the guys that I was friends with, they would eat before they went to the gym, an hour before. That and works I, for some people. Oh, my God. I, I would get so nauseous. I'm like, guys, all the blood flow is going to your stomach to digest. Right. I don't want it there. It, I want it in my muscles that I'm working. Some people like to take in some calories, though, before they – maybe liquid, but – That was actually the beginning of the fasting for me. I started going to the gym before COVID. I started going to the gym at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and I started training with a training partner at that time, and I just – I wouldn't eat before because okay. – I just it was too early and training fasted I felt better I felt cleaner I felt the pump better I just there was nothing sloshing around in my stomach so that kind of translated into years later I just I don't eat before the gym generally mm -hmm. if it's later in the afternoon or the evening I'll obviously have eaten usually before then I did a 24 hour fast and then I had jujitsu at night I broke that fast two hours before jujitsu because I knew I was going to need that energy. Right. Because uh, I had trained already in the morning. I, I don't want to double up and not have any calories in me. So there's there's exceptions. Yeah. Once again, non-religious. I go I go by the seam of my pants of just like where how I feel each time and during the day. Yeah. At, at the same time, with that said, even though I mentioned being flexible, rolling with the punches, it's also important to have discipline and consistency. So it's both sides of the same coin. Yeah. Uh, you know, most days I do the same things at the same times, more or less, you know, because that's what works for me. You have to find, I've tried it all. I mean, I've tried training in the morning, training at night, training empty stomach, training full, post-workout, pre-workout. I've, I've done all of it, right? So, you know, what matters most is finding what what what's best for you, what you can stick to, consistency. That's the key. Yeah. What you can be, consistency is king. So if you can be consistent with something 80, 90% of the time, you're going to win. You're going to achieve your goal, whatever that goal is. Yeah. You know? What are your favorite uh, foods to consume each day? Besides uh, the meats, you, you said meat, yeah. nuts. What type of what type of meat? Well, eggs are my favorite food. I'll okay. start with that, number one. Number two. And, and on the topic of eggs, yes. one of the, I forget who said it, but it was cool that they basically said like eggs are so good for you because it's basically just like, like a superfood. It's a super, it's yeah. just like a little, it's, it's a little, um, yeah. It's it's a little baby like chicken yeah. uh, developing. Yeah. It's got all the nutrients. It's got everything that you need in there. Yeah. I know people don't want to hear that, but yeah. it is what it is. If like I, if I can't get any eggs at the supermarket, I'll just go eat a baby chicken. <laughs> <laughs> just right there. So anybody got any baby chickens? Crazy. Yeah. Um. So eggs are my favorite food though because they are they have a high like awesome profile of macro and micro micronutrients, which is important. Yes. Micronutrients are super important. Yes. We get too stuck on the macro, we f we lose focus on the micro. Totally, and and also eggs are like just think of it. There is some practical wisdom that should have been passed down for generations that like we shouldn't ignore either. Like eggs are, I'm about to break my own rule. 
Eggs are a good food. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get this guy out of here. Oh, he just said we weren't talking about good and bad food. Who invited him? Right? Yeah. So, but you know what I mean, right? So um, my other favorite, I'll, ask you, I'll answer your question about meats, but my second favorite food is nuts. I love almonds. Right? Okay. Uh, Which the, almonds are way better than peanuts because peanuts have high mold count a lot of the time. Peanuts are not technically not a nut. They're a legume. Yep. Um, I'll eat a few peanuts here and there, but it's just not, it's not really in my I repertoire. like peanut taste yeah. better than almonds, yeah. but knowing that information of- the background and all this stuff. I've, I've been focusing more on consuming almonds versus. Uh, I keep it simple. Um, I uh, I don't want to get into too many rabbit holes here. By the way, I roast my own almonds. I buy them raw and roast them in the oven at a very low temperature so that they- How long? That, uh, let's say like about 20, 20, 30 minutes at like 200 degrees, very low temp with maybe a li- You could do it dry, maybe a drop of coconut oil, but that way I'm not getting the- processed, you know, drenched in, in cottonseed oil or canola oil, roasted and burnt from the store. Is that what they do? Yeah. The, so roasted nuts are typically done with cheap, in cheap quality oils. And I don't want that in my body. Yeah. I'm, I'm not shocked. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I, yeah. I mean, they're going to cut corners yeah. anywhere they, anywhere they can. Yeah. I'll, if you want me to text you how to do it at home, it's very simple. I'll yeah, sure. The recipe. Check to me. I'll put it in the show notes too. Yeah. yeah. Super easy. Anyone can do it. You could buy raw almonds and roast them yourself, raw cashews, whatever you want. Uh, but Going to the meat, so my te- I actually have it's. I'll describe it this way: it's more of a template. I have a template for food shopping, and thus a template for what I'm going to eat all week long. And it's pretty simple. When I go, f- it starts with the food shopping. This is again, most people need the basics, right? So I love that we talked about all this other stuff, all the all this this what I would call like level two, like fancier stuff. But honestly, most people just learn need to learn how to food shop and plan yeah. and plan and prepare. That's the number one thing. It doesn't thing. need to be an exciting fridge. Yeah. Like that's, the, that's, the, that's the unfortunate truth. It yeah. doesn't have to be exciting. And I have to remind myself that yeah. a lot of times because I'll look and I'll be like, well, I have a freezer full of meat. I have eggs. I have uh, kimchi. I have some rice and this and that. And yeah. I just go, oh, I need to go food shopping. And I just buy a bunch of, sh- a bunch of extra shit, like oh, the complimentary stuff. And- don't buy stuff you're not going to cook. That's the worst. Oh, dude, I, yeah. I waste vegetables all the yeah. time. I'm the worst. Frozen, buy frozen. So. Yes, bok choy. Yeah. I constantly buy bok choy. And then when I cook it, it doesn't come out the right way. And I just yeah. get irritated. It's pretty easy to cook. Just stir fry. You can ste- I steam it first. Then you can give it a quick stir fry for some flavor. If you okay. Want. Yeah. So steaming. So, okay. So let's talk a little bit about uh, shopping, cooking, templates and food and then also you ask what I like to eat so mm-hmm. this will answer all those in one I keep it simple like I've been cooking 90% of my food for a decade but I'm not a chef right uh, my food doesn't look fancy but here's how I do it right so I um, I buy three to four proteins every time I go to the supermarket three to four fruits three to four vegetables and a whole bunch of eggs <laughs> right and that's pretty much it so how now many, how many eggs last you a week well, I have a family of four. We go through five or five or six dozen. Damn. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, I got yeah. just me and Kenji. Kenji gets one raw egg every couple of days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, maybe when you get that farm, I'll move out next door and we can grow some. I'm, I'm going to have some chickens. Yeah. I'm getting some chickens. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid, that, I'm, truth be told, I'm afraid he's going to eat them though. Yeah. They they, they have high prey drive, oh, uh, Akitas yeah. and Shiba Inus. Like yeah. those, You're going to need are, a big coop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I know he'll keep away the foxes, so. Yeah. So, so a couple, all right. So, so which proteins, which fruits, which vegetables? I buy the ones I like. I buy ground chicken, ground beef. I buy, I'll, I'll do a roasting. I'll roast a whole, uh, I'll, I'll get a whole chicken and roast it. That's the best. You could say, you know, if you buy a whole organic chicken, it's like three bucks a pound. If you buy the chicken breast boneless skinless, which is missing a lot of good stuff, it's missing the skin. It's missing the dark meat. It's missing all the fat. It's also like $12 a pound, yeah. right? So why not just, and, and I'm just telling you, if, if anyone out there is afraid to roast a chicken, it's really not that hard to do. Um, I've converted to chicken thighs versus yeah. chicken breast. Oh, chicken thighs. Yeah. Chicken thighs. Yeah. So, but the key is, and I, I have all this template that I'm describing, I actually have, if anybody wants it, I'll send it to them. It's, it's I have it in writing. And um, basically the key is, you, I, when I come home from the supermarket, like I'm probably usually on Saturday or Sunday, I start cooking right away. So that way I minimize the the spoilage. There's almost, I almost ha- I'll never have any spoilage, right? So it's, it's now I'm good at this because I've been doing it for so many years and you may not do it exactly like I do, but you maybe can, you know, take something away from what I'm about to say, which is whatever you buy, come home, batch cook a bunch of it right away. Build that two hours, two, two and a half hours into your schedule. This before you, I don't even put half my stuff in the fridge or freezer. Mm-hmm. I, I start cooking oven on while I'm putting the other things away and start cooking. So now right away I'll roast the chicken and 
roast two, maybe three pounds of broccoli and, you know, three pounds of potatoes, right? All while I'm putting away the groceries, while I'm doing other things, while I'm listening to the Rizology podcast, <laughs> <laughs> literally, right? So now I'm, I'm habit stacking, right? I'm learning, I'm cooking, I'm, sh- right? I'm doing things, multiple things at one time. Then when that's all out, now I have like 10 pounds of food cooked in the fridge. I'll probably eat a plate right there because it's hot and fresh. And then I've got food for like the next three days done. Now I've removed the friction. It's like going to sleep in your gym clothes, right? Cook ahead of time, batch cook ahead of time. Now I probably have to batch cook. Now throughout the week, I'll cook a few other things, but I always have these components ready to add in. The essentials. Exactly. So now if I want to make a little rice on, you know, Tuesday night, I've got the vegetables already done. It's so much easier when you take, when you, by the way, when you batch cooking, I can't speak, I can't say it enough, uh, strongly enough. If you batch cook, meaning you cook three to six different foods at one time, that is infinitely more efficient than cooking three to six different foods at three to six different times. You got to stop. You got to start. You got to clean. But if you batch it all into one session, that's only one time starting, one time stopping, and one round of dishes to clean. That's it. So, you know, get good at that and you will be setting your whole week up for nutritional success. Cool. Yeah. And speaking of the dishes, what I, what I find crazy is I have my dishwasher and it's constantly going every day between me and him. It's constantly going, constantly going. Uh, there's a study now that shows that you get a ton of microplastics from the dishwasher fluid and pods. I was <laughs> <laughs> just, just throwing it out there. Uh, just letting Sorry, people, hand washing everything. Just letting people know. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to throw it out. It's not even my dishwasher. And, uh, but the way that gets, almost 90 to 95% of it off is just by rinsing it after it comes out of the dishwasher. Interesting. interesting. So just figure I'd give that little tidbit okay. about that. Uh, I, think, I think we're in the wrong business. We need to go into like eco-friendly home building. Oh my God. There's too many, there's just <laughs> Which too, that's a whole industry. Yeah, there's just too much shit, man. Yeah. There's just too much shit to go over. Uh, what's your favorite cut of meat? Okay, favorite cut of meat? Good question. Uh, I was gonna, my gut was gonna answer with steak because that was like the manly thing to say. But honestly, I love, I love roasted chicken. Really? I really okay. Do. I really do. I mean, I love a good steak. And I love I love a piece of salmon, but and uh, but I think I think I do have to say roasted chicken. Okay, when you get the skin crispy. I'm a ribeye guy. A ribeye, Listen, super man. rare. Listen, man. Oh, I'll have both man. at the same time. You know? Oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> I don't mind. I love that. Uh, do you want to ask a, a couple of questions from the from the the side that you had? You know, I don't know, man. Because we go we've been going for two hours. It's been two hours. It's been two hours. Uh, I think we should we probably save some of those things. I so, wasn't expecting to ask you questions, you know. You can ask me. How about you ask me one? One? Yeah, All ask right, me one. one. Let's find a good ask one. me one, and then uh, we'll we'll set a date to come back All in right. uh, 2024. My uh, goodness. I know. I'm so glad 2023 is almost done. This year has been great and shitty all in the same. All right. Let's see. Let's, let's think one, one thing that we didn't talk about. One thing that we didn't talk about. Let's see. We talked about... All right. Um... Now, you know what? We covered a lot of these things, but that funny? you know, it, what, what happens? Yeah, it's, it's all good. I think what I'll say is this. Um, the one thing that we didn't cover that's on that list that I'll mention, uh, it might tie a few, a few pieces together is this. I had a little note there. It was like you, I just had notes and just mm-hmm. see where it flows. Yeah. I had a note there, alcohol and purpose, right? So what does that mean? I mean, I've been hearing you talk a lot. First day I met you, you told me you, we were at that fight yeah. and, and I wasn't drinking and you weren't drinking. And you're like, no, oh, man, I don't drink. And we talked a little bit about that. And you got me thinking. Now, since September, since I did my first version of my own icky guy, I, I've, I did have a drink on my birthday, but I've noticed that because I'm focused on, highly focused on what I who I want to become and what I want to do and who I want to serve. In other words, my purpose, my icky guy, the desire to drink alcohol, which I have a long history with is almost gone. Mm-hmm. So I just thought I would bring that up and, and say like, even another one is like, it, it's a, it, I know it's different for everyone, but I know, I know you've talked about this with other guests and I just think it's an important message for people to hear. I'm not saying quit drinking. It's not what I'm saying. Um, but I think that there's just, it's something for people to think about. Like, it really messes up your health, right? Big time. Okay. So there's a time, there's, there's, there's a dose. There's probably a dose that's like, you know, relatively safe, but then there are many doses that you might not even be aware of how badly they're messing you up. Among all the other things that they, that, uh, that heavy alcohol consumption leads to gets yourself into trouble, gets your, your friends and family into trouble and relationships. Um, but the purpose, you know, I think what I would say, I'll speak for myself now. I don't want to preach, but like, 
you know, when I was when I was a little more lost and a little bit without a purpose, I know that I was turning to alcohol to to try to fill that void, right? And so nowadays, I notice that I have a higher, more tuned in sense of purpose. I don't feel the I don't I barely ever feel the need to drink. So I just hope that that's helpful for some people. And um, yeah, you know, am I saying I'm quitting drinking? No. If I want to have a celebrate, if I want to have a celebratory, you know, drink here and there, I might. I might. But most of the time, if you take a minute to take maybe a deep breath <laughs> and pause and ask, why do I really want this drink? Yeah. You know, you might, you might, you might realize. Like the other day, I took my son to a football game, and we had a great time. It was just me and my son. Now. As you know, going to a football game is heavily associated with drinking, yeah. right? Which it shouldn't be because <laughs> that's when everyone gets into fights yeah. about the now, teams and everything. Now, I felt this like we're walking by the tequila bar. Oh, they have the beautiful tequila bar. I love tequila, right? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not even a beer guy. I, I'm gluten-free, right? But I felt this like, like, should I get a drink? Should I not? It's a battle in my head. This yeah. quite, I ended up not getting it. But it's like there are these things that stay with us. Now, this applies to food too, Right. So there are these these things that stay with us. It's like I said, like I used to grow I grew up eating, you know, pies of pizza and baskets of bread. So I'm always going to be attracted to bread. It's never going to fully go away. It's never going to be a, there's never a day on your journey in your health journey that your past struggles will be completely gone. Mm-hmm. They'll always be a part of you. Hey Kenji. <laughs> so so and that's the same for food and alcohol too. So, you know, I'll always be attracted at some times and places to alcohol, but I think when you have something like an icky guy going for you or, you know, you can you can fight it with that. Yeah. In fact, not even fight it. It can it can relieve that. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. I want to see what you thought about that. Yeah, I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. I mean, the longer the streak, the longer I don't want to drink. Uh it it kind of helps you get set in your ways and your and set in stone. Uh when our when Tyler and I, um, our buddy Matt got uh, married to uh, Kristen, uh, his wife now, this past, uh, when was that, November, we didn't drink at the wedding. I think I said uh, in an Instagram post the next day, that was like the first time I've ever been at a wedding and I haven't been drunk. Yeah. And uh, that wedding lasted a lot longer <laughs> than any wedding previously. It, Weddings seemed to go by in a flash. It was actually the same amount of time. You just experienced it. Exactly. <laughs> so I actually got to enjoy and have conversation right. and enjoy the food and this and that. And I don't know. I think that there is, um, I think there's a certain level of power that you regain when you don't let these external factors control you anymore. Mm -hmm. And not that it ever did for me. I was never a big partier. I was never a big drinker. I, uh, I never really did any drugs. I think the hardest shit I ever did was weed and I smoked maybe 10 times my entire life. And every single time I, not that I regretted it. I just, I just kind of was like, why am I doing this? I don't know. It just, everybody does it or it seems like everybody my age, my age is doing it. So, uh, fuck it. Let me just see if I enjoy it. And the same thing goes with the drinking. Um, but when you stop allowing these things to have a power over you and the potential judgment of others and this and that, and people actually look at you and they, they, they see a different side of strength that wasn't necessarily, uh, present in front of them at, 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 at other times. So when they look at you and you're not indulging in alcohol and everybody else is, and yep. you're sitting there and not mean or straight face, but you're just more in tune with what you want out of life and what you actually are getting out of it versus just, Hey, going with it. Yeah. Let's get fucking ripped and this and that. And you know, then the next day is fucked up. Then you miss your workout. Then you feel horrible or you drank too much and now you're sick and you're throwing up. I don't know. I just, I, there's no right or wrong when it comes down to it, but I believe that keeping yourself on the straight and narrow monk life, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to be a monk to practice monk life stuff, but monk life to me means like not indulging in societal norms right the over the overindulgence of porn the overindulgence of alcohol weed vapes if i see another grown ass fucking man smoking on a little pink vape like bro get it together dude right. like i have i have i have friends that vape you know shouts to my boy anthony i love anthony to death i really do. he's a good dude man i do a lot of videos for his construction company good dude every time he's with me though he's got that fucking vape in his hand and every time i go bro stop doing that. And he's coughing i'm like dude 
what are you doing? Stop, bro. It's a it's a stupid little thing. Like, is he, I, I get it. Oh, it's so hard. Not him saying this, but other people. Like, oh, it's so hard to quit. I get it. But, like, you're not even trying. Yeah. Li- li- d- throw it out. Curse words there. We don't use the T word. Yeah, well, you're not even you're not even attempting, let's say. <laughs> you're not even attempting yeah. to do it. Yeah. You're just, you're not even, you're not even putting the first step of action into it like you said before oh yeah the motivation doesn't come like you have to do the action you have to first. take an action the yeah. first action is throwing the fucking thing out because you're yeah. not going to use it if you don't own one sometimes that requires an honest conversation first also right so if the person isn't if the person's not w- ready or willing to stop doing a b or c whatever it is vaping alcohol or eating you know fast food every day whatever the case may be sometimes someone will come to you and say hey i want to uh, so I'll use the weight loss example because this is one I deal with. So they'll come and we can tie it back to vaping. So sometimes someone will come to me and say, hey, I want to lose weight. Uh, so I'll say, okay, we we'll come to have a conversation and we'll say, well, why don't you do X, Y, or Z? And then they don't do X, Y, or Z. Okay. Yeah. Well, then the conversation has to go back to the beginning. Okay. Because do you really, what do you really want here? If the person doesn't want to quit vaping, then- No, generally it, generally they don't. Right. So they, don't, they know they need yeah. to, but they don't want to yeah. because they're so engrossed and hooked into it because of the addiction. Right. So I, I understand, but food's an addiction as well. Yeah. Like when I was fat, do you think it was it was, it was was easy for me to just like quit everything that I knew and just Not make at all. sure I got into it? No. Even this past year. All the, all the training styles that I, I'm doing now, I never did, but I knew I needed to switch things up. I knew I needed to focus on eating better foods. Even though I knew all of this, I just didn't apply it. But now the application went into effect and I've been good. And I'm staying on that path because I'm not starting over. That's the whole point. I'm not going to re lose the weight. Right. Like there's a difference between getting a little fluffy for me. That's adding, that's a pound up. I'm, right. I'm a pound and a half up from my lowest totally point. Normal. I go up and down, by the way, I oh, fluctuate. Yeah. Oh, plus, plus or minus five pounds. That's fluffy for me right yeah. now. Yeah. So like I have to, I'm staying focused and guess what? What I did from March to, to, uh, let's just call it for the summer. Let's call it to June dropping from two thirty down to one ninety. I mean, that's no small feat awesome. and it took a lot of work and it yeah. took a lot of dedication. So you have to apply it. You have to do it. And I believe that these things are not only money makers for large corporations and, and organizations and whatnot, but they do it to keep people suppressed in a lot of different ways. Health-wise, it's a full circle. Health-wise, yeah. mentality-wise, all this shit. It's, it's really, that's a whole other episode. It really is. It is. But it's, it's, it's really bad. And by breaking some of these societal norms and the things that are, are culturally acceptable, you do stand, not that you're better than other people, but you do stand in a higher plane of, of, of mental clarity and enlightenment. And once you do wait, wake up. I believe that there's a a full-scale waking up of the entire world right now. I agree. Uh and I I I don't know where that leads us, but I do believe that we're starting to be clued in that we've been lied to for a long You're time. You're a part of that, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm trying to be and I'm trying to get the message out. Mm-hmm. And I and and this isn't a left or a right thing. This isn't a this is a uh, Andy Forsella says the best thing ever. He's not and this is this is this is just on on the topic of like sides. He's not Republican. He's not Libertarian. He's not Democrat. He's not he's not uh, conservative. And I, I once he said this, it just fucking clicked for me because I usually say I'm conservative. I sit in the middle, this and that, because I don't like anybody. But realistically, what he said is actually what I'm gonna, I'm going for. It, I'm going to say, go for it. I'm pro freedom. Yeah. I'm pro freedom. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what fucking side. I don't care any about any of this shit. I am pro. You being free and getting to do what you want, thinking for yourself, not being a slave to the system, because when it comes down to it, we all are the foods that we consume, the taxes that we pay, the laws that they put into effect over the health of our citizens. It's not. It's all to keep us at a low point and not hit that higher, higher frequency. And it really needs to be more publicized and sp- spoken about on a more mainstream platform instead of making it a left versus right, a right versus wrong. You like how I said that? Yeah. Yes. Right versus wrong, <laughs> a bad versus good. Yeah, no, it, that's what it's about. It really has to be just a conversation. It has to be the, if you believe that, doesn't mean that you're incorrect. That That's your belief system. That's cool, man. But just understand that, this may change the way that you think or may change your f- existence. That's why I said what I said at the beginning about values. And I know we're going to, we're going to wrap it up, but yeah. you know, I just you know, keep looking at Kenji to make yeah. sure he's laying down. It's all good. <laughs> Sometimes all good. he'll sneak up on you. But you're out there, you're making people think, okay. With 
especially when you go, even though you have guests on and then you sometimes go into these Nick Rizology tangents <laughs> of you, you know, that's, a that's what, that's part of the reason why people listen because you're making them think and you're telling it like you see it without any filter and people respect that. Yeah. So I respect that. Well, I'm tired of seeing yeah. things with filters and I, I've always been like this and I appreciate you saying that yeah. you respect that. That means a lot to me because yeah. you're a man that has a lot of life experience, a lot of um, growth development and stuff like that. So when somebody in your, in your position says that you respect what I'm talking about and, and the ideas that I bring to the table, not only does that make me feel like I'm doing something right, but it does make me feel good that I'm able to touch people's lives yeah. like that as well. So thank you. We need that. But I just, there's been so much fluff. Yeah. Over the years, so much fluff. I mean, the suppression of voices on every side, the the, um, the ideologies just being shot down before you can even have a conversation about it. Uh, just the bullying on all sides, and these people say that they're not they're against bullying. It's like no, no, no. You are a fucking bully. Like, uh, and you and you're not allowing people to think and do things themselves. But it's really because they're afraid of when people actually start bringing these ideas and these these uh, talking points or these um, these different perspectives that make people think and make people understand that things aren't what they've been told their entire existence. That they're afraid now that the resistance or the the pushback of no 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 you're wrong. They just want to be told they're right all the time because they have a platform. Well, now there are. 500 other people with microphones in front of them and some of that information may be incorrect some of it may be correct but people can actually make their judgment calls now they're not just owned by cnn they're not owned by fox they're not owned by xyz and purging the stories that they deem fit for people to follow as their disciples it's really about take all of this information and form your opinion that's that's what i've always been about yeah i agree and for those who who are listening who don't have a microphone there are other ways to think and vote for yourself. You don't have to, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan vote of change. Cha vote, vote, vote with your wallet. wallet right? I love when you said that, by change the way. Change from the bottom up, right? So I, like, I'd like. i love to fix the food system, but I can't do that alone. But I can make, play my, whenever I go shopping, I buy the brands that I know are not killing the planet. Yeah. You know, so the more, believe it or not, um, yeah, the, but there are hidden costs to buying heavily subsidized, right? Uh, so if you buy conventional foods that are loaded with garbage, right? And they're even though they're cheap at the checkout, at the, at the register, you're actually paying for them in your taxes because we subsidize those companies to be so cheap. So you don't think about that when you're checking out, but you're paying for it, yeah. right? So you can vote with your wallet and you can lead by example, right? Even if it's just in your own home. Right. Pay the two fifty in grocery costs now for the quality food, right. even though you don't want to. I don't want to pay for the two. I, I can afford it, but I don't want to pay for it. Or you pay for it in your health later on at too. the doctor and in the taxes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Matt. Yeah. Nick. Oh man, it was, was a good dude. Bro. It was great, bro. Was awesome. I appreciate you. You're an amazing human. I'm very glad that we got to link up that day with uh, Scott. Exactly. And this is the start of a, of a really great friendship. I and can't thank you enough for having me on. This has oh, been my great. pleasure. Great. We'll talk about vitality next time, which is a word that we didn't talk about, but we'll save that. Write it, write it I, down. I wrote it down. Write it down. We got it for the next episode. Vitality. Yeah. Vitality. Um, for any type of coaching information or anything like that, people that want to work with you or pick your brain, maybe you get some some eyeballs on and they're interested. How can they reach you? I appreciate that. So look, I'm really easy to reach. It's at Coach Matt Freed on all social media handles, LinkedIn, Instagram, wherever. Uh, the easiest way to get in touch with me, if you like what I have to say, I have a free newsletter. It takes five minutes to read. You can subscribe. Links in all my bios. It comes out every Saturday. And please send the link to me and I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, and that's the easiest way. It's free. It takes five minutes. I'll throw in a bonus for listeners of Rizology. If anybody really needs help with coaching and they want to work with me and they sign up for a program, I'll give them a month free. Wow, I love or that. Just mention Rizology. I appreciate you. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Uh, this is episode 80 with my man, Matt. Uh, once again, I have to go on, on record and say I have to do the promotion for the show. Please continue to share the show, comment on it. Uh, any type of sharing or subscriptions that you do for the YouTube channel, especially, it helps. It helps the algorithm. It helps me. Yeah, dude. It just it, it helps the show grow and for me to continue sitting down with amazing people like Matt uh, and bringing a lot of information and value. I mean, value to everybody uh, because there's a lot of different things that we were able to talk about and touch on that you may not have known. And if you did know now, hopefully maybe we reaffirmed it for you. So on that note, I appreciate y'all for fucking with us. Peace. Peace.